And just like that, everything is going perfectly. Hello. First try. First try, not even a problem. Welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast. Will, how are you? I am good. Bob, I have a bit of a dilemma, and I want to bring it up to the your chat, if it's okay. Sure. Uh, YouTube, my watch history on YouTube, it just isn't working anymore. <laughs> and that's a problem. Wait, that happened to me know. today. Really? Wait, is, that might be a thing. Hold on. Okay, because I checked on Twitter. I asked on Twitter, and I haven't checked recently. Um, and I don't know how if anyone's responded yet. And but a friend of mine said it happened to him. And now you're saying it's happening to you. So that's leading me to believe that it's not just me. I'm not crazy. Yeah. So I don't know what it is. But okay, I can I can just do this. I don't know what it yeah. is, but uh, no, it's the wrong thing. Um. So you can see here that I was watching Philip DeFranco, mm -hmm. but it's not at all in my history. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I don't know what, I don't know what that's about. And also I watched one of my own videos on, on, on the computer and on my phone yeah. and uh, it didn't come up. So like so, so random things are going into my history. It seems like. So here, here's where things get interesting. Uh, okay. So on my phone, I was watching a video on uh, a new gigabyte monitor, and that's oh. not in my watch history. What is in my watch history are the three recent Foo Fighter videos my wife is currently watching on the TV. Okay. <laughs> so I think something's, something's broken not... about certain devices, probably. Maybe. Yeah. So this, like, this sucks because I... That's how I get through my day. I'll start watching on my phone, then I'll watch it on the computer, then I'll watch it on my iPad. It's screwing me up. YouTube. Yeah. Fix your stuff. I go Don't to the be history. Like I go to the history to check it out on a on a different uh uh device. Yeah. Sometimes it'll it'll just have the video playing in the bottom right corner if you go to a different device, but it doesn't always yes. do that. Yes. Anyway, uh, hi everybody. How are you doing? I'm in the studio right now. I have a lot to do, so I'm just doing it. I'm just doing. We're doing it live, baby. Um, also, I haven't been streaming, and I won't be streaming for a while because I'm doing a lot of things. You probably won't see me do anything till like Sunday, which sucks because I'm at the very end of my Kirby run. But I also do want to have like a very solid day to finish Kirby, so that I can just plow through it at the. End. Well, if you don't know, I'm doing a no hit run of Kirby. I just decided... Oh, yes, I remember you telling me that. I just decided for some stupid reason I was just gonna... I was just... I figured... I was afraid of the game being too easy, so why not just make it hell for myself right off the bat? <laughs> uh, so I'm doing now, that here on Twitch. Say... Also, it'll be rolling out on, on YouTube.com slash Wolfden Clips uh, uh, pretty soon. When you say no hit, mm -hmm. I imagine, like, once you get hit, you, re you restart. But are you restarting the level... So, just the level or the entire game? So at first I was so when you when you normally do a no hit run, you restart the whole game. I'm not doing that. Right. Uh okay. that sounds like it's already hell, but that sounds like hell. Originally I was restarting yeah. the whole level, but the levels are pretty long. So now what I do is if I one hit equals a full death. So if I get hit, I just I just have to kill myself. Where I stand right. no matter what. So Normally what's happening is if I get hit, I just let the enemy full kill me after that. Which takes a long time because it, Kirby's got a <laughs> lot of health. Yeah. Um, anyway, today we brought you all here to talk about a few things. One of which is uh, what every Nintendo studio is currently working on because there was a Reddit user who collected all of the things that all of the Nintendo studios are working on. And it's an exhaustive list and I thought it would be very interesting. Uh, yes. <laughs> so that's one of the main things we're going to talk about today. But before we do that, we have to thank some subscribers. Now, I haven't streamed in a while, so a lot, there's a lot of people here. <laughs> um, <laughs> Metalhead, thank you for the two months. Spoopy Girl, thank you for the 12 months. Akmeister says, Konbanwa, Konbanwa. Uh, Robojack with 12 months. Ooh, shiny new badge. Tech Nanner with 100 bits. Good evening, Pissers. Okay, that's a new one. Sprozek with 16 months. E3 canceled. Bob wins. Yay! I we'll did have it. We'll more on that a little bit later. <laughs> um, 
Lance Colossi was six months. Hey, Bob and Will. Hope everyone's having a great day. Miamet's heart. I don't know who that is, but thank you, Lance Colossi, for the six months. Thank you. Uh, Brian Spinky, thanks for the 100 bits. Excelsior with the six months. Bob, always a pleasure. I still remember the first YouTube video I saw that got me here. You are an amazing inspiration. What was the video? Yeah, you can't just leave I want to know what like the that. video was. <laughs> but thank you for the support. Spoopy Girl, thank you for the Prime subscription. Carl Lover Doom, thank you for the four months. Hey, how many months do I have to subscribe in order for Bob to 100% Pokemon Legends? Never. <laughs> I shouldn't say never. If you gift... Oh, no, that's so long. Never... Never one hundred percent a game. It's five thousand the time. Five, I think five thousand subs. No, it's like three thousand subs is a Lamar Zoko. So three thousand gifted in one go, and I'll on a hundred percent Pokemon Arcus. <laughs> um, original Spiff, thanks for the four months. Jeffrey Sorensen, thank you for the fourteen months. Uh, Spoopy Girl, thank you for the five gifted subs. I very much appreciate that. That was a lot of subs. Also six, actually, she gifted before. Um, thank you very much. Razzle Jazzle, thanks for gifting us up. And uh, Killmatic, thank you for the five months. First try. You're goddamn right. Yep. Always on the first try. All right. Now, uh, oh, we still got more things to talk about. We still have to bury the lead yeah. here. Yes, because March is over, but it is now April. And that means with a new month, we get new games. If you're subscribed to PlayStation Plus or Xbox Live Gold and... As a bonus, we got late March games for Switch Online that we didn't talk about last week because they, of course, announced it after the podcast. But we're talking about them today. I almost can't believe it. It's it's crazy. The wow, what a games. games with gold list. What a crazy <laughs> list we have here. Okay. Um, I only put games with gold first because they announced it first, but we always start with PlayStation. Uh, and- Okay. For the month of April, starting today, actually, uh, you get Hood, Outlaws, and Legends for the PS4 and PS5, uh, SpongeBob SquarePants, The Battle for Bikini Bottom, Rehydrated on PS4, <laughs> okay. and Slay the Spire on PS4. I've heard good things about Slay the Spire. Me too. Uh, I've heard good things about SpongeBob SquarePants from crazy people on the internet. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I played uh, Rehydrated um, at a convention, uh, Mm -hmm. and it was horrible. It was one of the uh, worst previews I've ever had, because the game was completely unfinished and broken and whatever. Um, And uh, yeah, it was very bad. I assume they... But the problem was, the game was like two months out when I played that demo. So, like, the fact that it was so broken was very concerning. And I don't think they fixed that much by the time the game was released. Maybe this version is much better. People have said they like this game. I think it's for nostalgic reasons. Yeah. Um, It seemed pretty terrible to me. But, again, that was a preview. It was a... It was pre-release, but it, it's I c- can't imagine them finishing that game in time. Yeah, um, uh, I'm not one to judge people for the weird ass games they liked as kids. Uh, I will defend Mission Impossible on N64 till the day <laughs> I die. Um, and by all accounts, this is the best of the SpongeBob game. So if this was a game you enjoyed and you want to play the rehydrated version of it, by all accounts, it just it looks like a PS2 game still in yeah. 2022. <laughs> yeah, I'm not impressed at all. Um, uh, but I mean, people people are into it. There's there's a big cult following. So I mean, if you've yeah. been thinking about this, it's it's with your PlayStation Plus subscription. Yes, there you go. And then there's uh, and we have Hood, which uh, I Hood, don't know anything about. Which I about. thought was a Robin Hood game, but reading this description, I don't know anymore. <laughs> Hood is an intense online multiplayer title. Rival gangs compete with daring heists to hit the wealthy where it hurts. All right, that's Robin Hood-ish. Every time I see games in the uh, PlayStation Plus lineup, I'm always surprised by these AAA-looking games I've never heard of before. Yeah. (laughs) 
Like this looks like a legit big budget game, and I've never heard of yeah. this game before. Who who made this? It has to have been out for a while, right? Uh, I don't know. This might have been a debut. Really? Because they'll sometimes they've uh, Sony has done that, especially with like PS5 games on PS Plus. They'll debut them in PS Plus. Uh, May of last year. Okay, never mind. Uh, it is by Sum- Sumo uh, Newcastle. Okay. Who have worked on... They've co-developed Forza Horizon 5. Oh, because they- Sumo Digital is like the parent company. They- Sumo Digital, yeah. Yeah, they did Sonic All-Star Racing, the Texas yeah. Chainsaw Massacre, uh, Hood, Sackboy, A Big Adventure, Spider. I don't know what Spider is. Uh, Team Stock Racing, Crackdown, Snake Pass. Oh, there you go. Oh, this is a Robin Hood game. <laughs> this is legit a Robin Hood game. All right. <laughs> okay. Surprised there aren't more of those. It is public domain after all. The Sheriff of Nottingham was inspired by the tyrant from the Resident Evil games, according to the Wikipedia. What? Yeah. <laughs> That's but the sheriff of Nottingham has been a character since before that, <laughs> right? Well, I guess his version in this game, right? Okay, they modeled him after. So you could be modding your own business, and all of a sudden, the sheriff of Nottingham bursts through the wall and chases <laughs> you out to Sherwood Forest. Oh okay. my god! Okay, interesting. So it's like Assassin's Creed, but you have a a tyrant following you. The whole yeah. Time. Okay. I mean, that Why sounds like just... a pretty cool game. Yeah. Yeah, it could be it could be someone's cup of tea. It's just I'm still trying to wrap my head over the fact that it's fucking Robin Hood. Uh it got a a six out of ten from IGN. Okay. Yeah, uh, it looks like it's getting most like sixes. Yeah, I don't see the Metacritic. Uh anyway. We you have know what? hey, in, in twenty years, this could be somebody's battle for bikini bottom. <laughs> so it's true. Uh, we have Games with Gold. This is, again, the worst Games with Gold lineup I think I have ever seen in my life. The only one that I know of is MX versus ATV Alive, which I know of because it was just the one that, like, at GameStop, stacks of Xbox 360 games. You had Madden, Madden, FIFA, Madden, ATV, ATV. Yeah. Yeah. MX versus ATV. That's like one of those series. There's, there's a million of them. And you've probably played at least one, but you didn't know that there were at least 40 games in the series. Did it come with consoles? Not that I know of. I think it was a pack-in with something. So our PS2 that we have, I bought pre-owned, and that came with MX vs. ATV Unleashed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's as far as I got with the MX vs. ATV franchise. What, what is anyway, Alice in Wonderland looking thing? Uh, so for Xbox Live, all month long, you get another site on Xbox One and Xbox Series. Uh, from April 16th to the 15th, you get Hue on Xbox One and Series. And then on Xbox 360, which you can play on your modern systems, you get Outpost Koloki X from now until the 15th. And MX vs. ATV Alive from April 16th to the 30th. All right. Hugh looks kind of cool. Kind of looks like a mobile game, though. Uh, another site. Switch between two characters, uh, an intrepid teen kit, and a mysterious red-furred cat Hodge as you explore late Victorian-era London in this steampunk fantasy platform adventure. Okay. I feel like Games with Gold is now becoming the dumping ground for <laughs> just like, and I don't want to say no name indie fair because I don't think that's fair to them. But I mean, have you heard of any of these titles? <laughs> no, except for MX versus ATV Alive. <laughs> and like, what's really weird is that there's still a lot of 360 games that have not been put in this program. A lot of high profile 360 games that are backwards compatible why are you why are you picking uh outpost kowalski x <laughs> what about the max Payne games you know what about uh 
Arkham Origins? What about any of the Star Wars titles? It's because they're saving it all for Game Pass. We're, they're getting rid of games with gold soon. This is not going to be a thing anymore. Uh, There's no reason to have it sorry. around. Uh, I mean, all right. All right. Nack, nack. Let's friggin' let's, let's right. go. Let's move and on. And now, here. Nintendo. Nintendo finally graced us with games for SNES and NES on Switch Online. For NES, you get Dig Dug 2 and Mappy Land. And for SNES, you get Earthworm Jim 2. So why 2? Yeah, this is what... So Earthworm Jim 1 and Dig Dug 1 are not on Switch Online. And yet their sequels jump them to go right to the platform. So Dig Dug, I kind of understand because that's... In uh, that's in uh, Namco collection, isn't it? It's in one right, of the collections you, already. You could argue that that's the arcade version of Dig Dug. Oh, and Switch Online would probably have the NES version, oh, which I don't know if there are any substantial differences. But you know, if you're used to the NES version, you'll probably want the NES version. You're right. You're right. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, Earthworm Jim, I have no idea. Yeah, it's Earthworm Jim 2 doesn't make any all. sense. So, so, so my, my chat told me that Earthworm Jim 2 had saves. See, we're, we played Earthworm Jim 1 and 2 on Genesis. Right. And that did not have saves. Okay. Now that makes so, sense why I did not know that. <laughs> yeah. So, but I don't know if... But even still, if Earthworm Jim 2 had saves on it, that shouldn't matter because Switch Online adds save functionality to the game regardless. Mappy Land looks like shit. Is this a is this this is an NES game? Okay, okay, that makes yes. sense. Yeah, that looks Mappy like a Land bad is, game. Uh, Mappy has a surprising cult following. Uh, if you're into old Namco games, I have I have heard of it. I have seen yes. some of the cult following. Earthworm yeah. Jim, I think, is a great game. I don't know the distinction between one and two. I can't. Uh, I can't. They they blur together to me. From what I remember. Two is very bizarre because every level is different. You know, the first level is like a standard, like more in line with what Earthworm Jim 1 was. But then every level changed from like a space shooter to you have to escape through the dirt through uh, you become a blind salamander slowly sinking into somebody's that organs. That I remember. That like I a remember. weird mini game where you have to bounce all the puppies into the house. And if you drop too many, then... PD puppy turns into a monster and eats you. So it's very, very bizarre. And, I, and it's again, I'm surprised they went with the second one first because the first one is a much more straightforward action platformer. This one's like just very weird. Like they cranked up the first one's weird, but this cranked up the weirdness to 11. Interesting. Yes. Um, is the first one in any, it's not on the switch in any capacity. No. Weird. Yeah. Very strange. Yes. Uh, okay. Well, I mean, either way, Earth, both of the Earthworm Jim games are great. So I think that that's... Yes. Uh, that's I th- honestly, between all of these f- <laughs> included games with the online services, Earthworm Jim's the best one. Earthworm Jim too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mega Dragon has a good point. Japan got Harvest Moon instead of Earthworm Jim. Okay. Counterpoint... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They released that in America, so why didn't we get Harvest Moon also? That's a good point. I was just about to say it is probably a uh, uh, the localization thing because a lot of times Japan will get something that just was never localized in America. But yeah, if we yeah. got that game, then uh, what the hell? Yeah, That's weird. Maybe it just wasn't popular here. Oh wait, did they get that instead of Earthworm Jim? Yeah, I think that's what he's saying. Interesting. I bet Earthworm Jim probably didn't sell too well over there, so they were like, what can we do? Let's do freaking Harvest Moon. Which Unless I'm sure Earthworm Jim never came out in Japan. That's true too. I I bet Harvest Moon would have done just as good here. Like if they if they if they oh, yeah. released this with Harvest Moon, people would have been just as happy and maybe even more happy. Yeah. Cosmic Omelet says Earthworm Jim games suck. There I said it. <laughs> I used to rent them. Art and music is great, but very mad game. They are very difficult, and they are the bad kind of difficult. They're the kind of difficult where it's just like it can get very unfair. 
Mm -hmm. So I understand why people might not like this game. I don't understand why my computer just asked me if I would recommend Windows to a colleague or friend. <laughs> no. <laughs> I super wouldn't. What? You don't recommend Windows to a colleague or a friend yeah, what? <laughs> in every computer. <laughs> yeah, what the hell? Hey. That'd be like, do you recommend water to hey, a colleague e, or a friend? You should try you should try Windows. Uh, yeah, give it a shot. I mean, try check it out. Check out ch Google it. Check it out. Okay. Nobody runs around recommending operating systems. <laughs> Anyway, that's not that's not true. Linux people do that. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's true. You should get lit. I, I saw a great YouTube video that was like it was kind of like a TikTok. It was like less than a yeah. minute long. It was how Linux users turn on their computers. And it was like this broken like keyboard. The guy had to do like 14 different things mm -hmm. on it and then like yeah. rev up the computer. And then it goes through like a million <laughs> BIOS options. And then finally the computer turns on. Yeah. Uh, that like. That does not seem like a good time in any <laughs> stretch of the word. Why Why do you make... Computers are supposed to make our lives easier. Why do you choose to make your life so much harder? <laughs> anyway, uh, where did I leave off? Sir Smithers, next to the 11 months. I didn't have anything to watch earlier, so I watched some old Wolfden clips of Mario Sunshine. I laughed now like I laughed then. Bob's pain was comical. Thanks, dude. I'm glad you... Uh... <laughs> I'm glad my pain is your pleasure. Yeah, there's there's nothing like seeing somebody else suffer. That sunshine run was brutal, though. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that game is a lot worse than I remember. <laughs> <laughs> um. A Rod Dragon, thank you for the nine months. Lee Doug, thank you for the two months. Ew, ads, disgusting. Sorry, it's not our fault. I could run ads during streams. I just don't. I have never done yeah. that. Yeah. Don't Actually, that's not true. Do otherwise. <laughs> we did. Uh, we we did that Amazon ad that one time. I think the yeah. statute of limitations has lifted. We did that Amazon Prime ad. Uh, it took us like three tries to actually get it right, and we only got paid eighty six dollars. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know if we would ever do that again. Yeah. Um. Uh, where am I at? Sam Agachi, thank you for the gift of subs. Sam Bro, thank you for the subscription. And Rye Bread, thank you for the six months. God damn, why does Twitch make me use a desktop browser to subscribe? Why can't I just do it through the app? It's fucking dumb, Wolf Bros. I think if you do exclamation point subscription or sub or something in the chat, there's a link that makes it a lot easier if you're on mobile, I think. I have never subscribed on mobile. So I can't, I can't. Uh, I can't relate. Anyway, uh, now we can finally talk about the the topic of the show, the state of Nintendo. What every single Nintendo first party studio is working on. Yes, we just got bits. I will read that later. It is also related to a story we will be reading later. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is from a Reddit user named Fluff Bluff. And this list is exhaustive. This man yeah. <laughs> did a lot of work. I don't think we're going to be reading any all of this. Um, but I think there's a lot of interesting stuff here. Like, for example, there's 10 EPD studios. <laughs> what? Yes. Uh, so Nintendo's main first party internal studios are of EPD studios born from the fusion of Nintendo's old EAD, Entertainment Analysis and Development, and SPD, Software Planning and Development. Uh, EPD, which stands for Entertainment Planning and Development, is Nintendo's biggest and core studio. Currently, it's divided into 10 separate teams, each one working on different projects. I did not know that. Me neither. That's I knew that. Cool. I remember EAD and like EAD 1, 2, and 3. Like one was Mario, two was Zelda, three was something else. Um,. But yeah, I guess there was a whole big reshuffling that I was unaware of. So let's see here. EPD 1, 2, 6, and 7 are focused on supporting and coordinating with outside studios, usually only in an, in an overseeing position. Interesting. So okay. Yeah. That's interesting that they have dedicated, that they have multiple dedicated studios 
within their main studio, like basically being liaison between outside uh, developers. Yeah, so they're just to shuffle around to to help. <laughs> yeah, which I guess that well, may, that must explain why a game like Dread, yeah. which is made by Mercury Steam, which is not owned by Nintendo, but they were able to like provide the resources and funding to get it to that Nintendo level of polish. Yeah, and and like uh, Retro Studios working on Metroid Prime, like uh, they're probably well, working closely with with uh, one of the EPD studios. Well, I don't know because Retro is owned by Nintendo, oh. like flat out. So, I would just imagine I mean, they, that anybody that's not one of the internal EPDs probably has like a lot of correspondence with yeah, one of I'm the EPDs. Sure, I'm sure EPD one, two, six, or seven is working <laughs> with uh, Retro, right? Yeah, yeah, that's but the anyway. thing is is that they have four studios and their whole job is to coordinate with the outside studios. <laughs> yes. So yeah, that makes that makes sense. That's weird. Uh, Why don't they just fucking do it then? <laughs> if they have four studios working with outside suit, whatever. I'm sure they have a yeah. good reason. Yeah. Uh EPT three is the Zelda team currently working on the sequel to Breath of the Wild, recently announced to be delayed until next year. Okay, so they're the ones to direct your anger at if you're upset that the, I, <laughs> that the game was delayed. They might be autonomous. Like, they might not have to worry about talking with the other EPD studios. They might just have carte blanche to do whatever they need to to get the game done. That's what it... Because it's the Zelda team. Yes, it seems like it seems like a lot of these EPD studios are on their own. Yeah. Because uh, one, two, six, and seven, it says... Coordinating with outside studios. Yeah. So. Uh, EPD4, the assorted random stuff team, whose <laughs> recent works include Labo, Ring Fit Adventure, and Game Builder Garage. Now that There's sounds like chance... a fun studio to work on. Yeah. <laughs> There's a decent chance they're the team working on Switch Sports, uh, which seems to be which seems to match the rest of their output. That last part is pure speculation, though. Oh, do we not know who's working on Switch Sports? Uh, I don't think so. Nintendo doesn't really, like, advertise which specific studio is making the game. It's all just under the Nintendo moniker. Right. They probably only put, like, in the end credits, you know, specifically who was making it. Yeah, I hate that. Nintendo's really uh, secretive about who's working on what. To the point yeah. where, like, uh, I don't even think the, the developers of Metroid Dread received the award for it i think it was like no. some random corporate people took the award and it's like you didn't even develop the game dude <laughs> yeah yeah it, it was really Nintendo's, i don't like that they're they're of the mindset that uh individuals did not make this game nintendo made this yeah. game. yeah and you know it from if you know your history that's one of the big reasons why Todd McFarlane and Eric Larson and Jim Lee and Rob Liefeld left Marvel in the 90s to form Image because they were tired of Marvel basically saying, no, you didn't create these characters. Marvel created these characters. Right. Like, I get what they're doing. They want brand consistency. But at the same time, that wears on your creatives. Yeah. And they're going to want to seek more fulfilling work elsewhere there, there there's a balance you need like i understand that they'd want to be very protective over their ip and i mean they have all of these studios overseeing production so like of yeah. course they do have a, a big hand in the production of these games so like metroid dread even though an outside studio did it they nintendo does deserve a lot of the credit <laughs> some may argue even most of the credit but when yeah. there's an award being presented Probably let the fucking people who worked on the game receive yeah. the award, not just your not, little corporate people. Not Miyamoto's translator. Yeah, yeah, like, like you gotta pick your battles a little better in in, in yeah. that regard. Uh, next up is EPD Five, the Animal Crossing and Splatoon Three team currently working on Splatoon Three after the juggernaut that Animal Crossing New Horizons turned out to be. That's kind of crazy. Have they worked on Splatoon 2? I'd imagine so. Splatoon, going from Animal Crossing to Splatoon 3 seems like a crazy jump. 
Yeah. I'm hoping Splatoon I mean, 3 has like a lot of RPG elements. That's the first time you'll ever know. hear me say that. <laughs> I don't know, because it, if you if we go down this list, you'll see like some other studios that you don't think have anything to do with you know, they'll make one game they'll make two different games that you don't think have anything to do with each other, but yet they made them. True. I, I mean I mean so. these these are all extremely talented developers. So yeah. it's probably uh, refreshing to them to be able to jump between different types of games. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, next is EPD Eight, the three D Mario team. Their current project is unknown, but there are several rumors that claim they are working on a new Donkey Kong, as well as pre-production on the next three D Mario. Uh, it wouldn't be the first time a team works on a DK game before a three D Mario game, as the team behind Donkey Kong Jungle Beat. Followed it up with Super Mario Galaxy. Think so, about so, that for a minute. Donkey Kong Jungle Beat, a weird ass game that utilized a bongo peripheral. <laughs> that team then went on go went on to go make the best Wii game. <laughs> um, while while you were reading that, I was looking up to see if I could find a list of what these EPD developers have made, and Wikipedia just lumps them all together, which is kind of sad. It doesn't like break yeah. them down to the different development teams. Um, yeah. So eight is the three D Mario team. Yes. Uh, so what have which through all of them? All of the I guess 3D all Mario's? of them. At least all the current ones. Uh, uh let's let's see. I mean. Because you got to remember, these were under different names back in the day. So I don't know if whoever, whatever team was working on like Mario 64 then just morphed into EPD-8. It's, yeah, it says, it says that the team that worked on Jungle Beat moved on to Mario Galaxy. Is that this team? Is that EPD-8? Or is that just because it was the same, it was that just an immediate transition? I don't understand. Like the same exact people in EPD-8 made both of those. Because Mario 64 was developed by Nintendo EAD, which doesn't technically exist anymore. I th yeah, I think that those... I think that they're the same teams. They just got uh, renamed to EPD yeah. num with the number. Um, But anyway, I... If I had to take a shot in the dark... I would uh, bet money that EPD Eight is working on a 3D Mario because we're kind of in a we're we're, we're in a lull of 3D Mario. I think it usually yes. it takes like an insanely long time to develop for, for them to put out a 3D Mario. It, I think it's like six or seven years between 3D Marios, and yeah. we're well, at I mean, we're at five now. So. Any minute well, I mean, now, they're going to fart out a 3D Mario. That's why we get a 3D Mario once a generation, mostly. Right, right. So, yeah, I think I think 3D Mario makes sense. Donkey Kong, maybe. I'm really not interested in Donkey Kong. Even though it's like there's a lot of parallels between Donkey Kong and Mario, I have little to no interest yeah. in Donkey Kong. It would be interesting to see if they do a 3D Donkey Kong, because there's only been one of them, and Rare made it back on the N64. Maybe they'll see what happened with Kirby, and they'll be like... There's value in turning franchises 3D, even though they should have known that from 20 years ago. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, next is EPD Nine, the Mario Kart and Arms team, <laughs> currently split between uh, split between supporting DNA with Mario Kart Tour and working on 46 track DLC for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. That is 48 tracks. Yes. Um scheduled to last until late 2023 so that makes sense they're probably taking all of the stuff that dna did with mario kart yes. door and porting it and tweaking it to work with uh the switch version of mario kart 8 deluxe i'd also assume that they're probably working on a mario kart 9 there was rumors about that so like i doubt that this whole team is just working on support for dna <laughs> yeah um but yeah, we heard rumors that there was a Mario Kart 9 in development that had a wacky new feature. Yeah. I'm I'm sure there is a Mario Kart 9 in development. I just I highly doubt we will see it on the Switch. Yeah, I agree. It'll be the next it, console. Yeah. Cuz Mario Kart 8's already doing so well. Also, yeah. it's possible that that rumor was talking about the DLC. 
because everybody right. thought like when that when that uh when that direct was happening like before that direct everybody was like well, they're gonna announce mario kart 9 which made no yeah. fucking sense and then they announced the dlc and everyone's like see i told you <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i don't know uh yeah i, w I would assume if there is a new Mario, I mean, there is a new Mario Kart development. There has to be because yeah, it's it's a huge franchise. Uh, of course, yeah. they're working on something. That's a, that's going to be a while. Uh, right now, yeah. they're working on the DLC tracks. Right now, it's probably just a small team prototyping it. Right, and then DLC is over. Then they'll go to full on development. Right, right. So next we have EPD ten, which is the final one. Yes. Uh, this is the 2D Mario and Pikmin team. Ignoring the fact that Pikmin 4 uh, has been mentioned to be in active development since at least 2017 with nothing to show for it, uh, EPD 10's projects are currently unknown. Their last big game was Mario Maker 2, which they followed up with a port of Pik Pikmin 3, developed in collaboration with Aiding, and the newest installment of Big Brain Academy developed in collaboration collaboration with EPD4 and longtime series dev Indie Zero. That's a huge, weird mix of games. Yes. <laughs> That's very bizarre. It seems like Ten's like the like the weird like stepbrother. <laughs> yeah. Like just give him his blocks to play with him in the corner. <laughs> yeah. To go from 2D Mario to Pikmin to Big Brain Academy. There's a question I've got. Uh, where's the 2D Mario, uh, developer? Like, we, like, we see the 3D Mario development team. Who works on New Super Mario Brothers? And stuff Probably like that. Probably EPD 10. I'd hope so, if they if they did Mario Kart. Oh, uh, well, Mario this Maker guy, 2. This guy's saying that they are the 2D Mario team. Oh, it says in the, t in the beginning, yeah. The 2D yeah. Mario and Pikmin team. Yeah. So, I, I guess... In between 2D Mario's, they took a break to do Mario Maker, which would make sense because that's literally they made Mario Maker to be a development tool for them. That's true. <laughs> yeah, they saw the development tool that they had for Mario, uh, New Super Mario Brothers, and they were and they were like, we could just give the average Joe one of these and see what they do. Yeah, and then they did, and they made a whole game about it. I really hope Mario Maker three, but that's probably not till the next console. And that, yeah. I am certain, if they make a new Mario Maker, it will be Mario Maker 3D. Mm. That's I the think, only... I think they I can feel do like, I think it'll still be Mario Maker 3, but there will be a 3D mode to it. Okay. Like, you'll still be able to do the switch between Mario 1, 3, Worlds, and New Super Mario Brothers themes... But then, like, at the bottom, there will be, like, a special 3D version where you can do, like, Mario 64 style. No, I I agree. I think it'll, it will yeah. have all of the 2D game modes, but then also have a 3D one. I think right. the jump between Mario Maker 1 and 2 was very disappointing. I, 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 I always said I just wanted Mario Maker on the Switch, and I didn't care what it, what it looked like. I just wanted the right. game there. And then they, it's like they, it's like they said, all right, bet. And they just made the game worse <laughs> and then put it on the Switch. <laughs> Oh, uh, you mean like adding hills was not enough for you? Slopes, Will. They're called slopes. <laughs> That's their words. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's not enough because they got rid of the mystery mushroom. Uh, they they put in the, the 3D world, but it was 2D. Yeah. It's the worst game mode that, that's in there. They got rid of uh, uh, 100 Mario Challenge in favor of the endless mode, which doesn't feel the same at all. Um, but they added stuff that ended up being good after like a year with the game out with the ninja speed runs and the, and the, um, the, 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 the super worlds, but it took them way right. too long to get there. And they had a great idea for the multiplayer, but it ended up mm -hmm. being trash and, uh, yeah, it game didn't work online. Yeah. They, they added a, a mode that was broken. So, so they gave you a feature that made the game worse. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, that's my rant about Mario Maker that I that I'm obligated to make every okay. few weeks. So we are out of the EPD studios, and now we're on to everyone else. But these are still first party studios. Correct. These are studios yeah. that Nintendo owns and has direct control over, including Nintendo Software Technologies, 
Once one of the biggest, uh, once one of the big end's most prominent Western studios responsible for Wave Race and 1080, the second half of the 2000s saw the studio take a series of hits, most prominently the cancellation of its most ambitious game, Project Hammer. From around that time and until the release of the Switch, NST has been banished to localization and the Mario vs. Donkey Kong series. Fortunately, in 2017, the studio, the studio has been involved in bigger projects, including original games like The Stretchers and Good Job, as well as supporting the development <laughs> of Snipper Clips and Super, Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. Their current project is unknown. Um, Good Job was a great game. It came out of nowhere, but it was it was a very yeah. good game. Um, weird. This is another weird, weird one. Like, like, and it's it's Nintendo software technology. So, what made them get banished? You know what it is. I think that they're working on something huge, and uh, these are all just side projects. Well, I don't know because this this is uh this is located in in Washington State. The studio. Uh, oh, and that's I, why they don't want to work with the Americans. <laughs> Yeah, uh, something's up with like their relationship with like a Nintendo of America. Yeah, and that's why they don't. I mean, but like, uh, it's not even like the good 1080 and Wave Race. It's Wave Race Blue Storm and 1080 Avalanche on the GameCube, right? And even then, it's like a lot of ports. Mm -hmm. It's like the Zelda Collector's Edition on GameCube. It's the Sin and Punishment uh, conversion to Virtual Console. They only did support on Bowser's Fury. Yeah, yeah, they're they're more of a support studio than a f at least nowadays they're more of a support studio than a full on game developer. I, Although, gu I, Mario I, I guess it makes kind of sense because uh, they're gonna need uh, Western influence on like a little Western touch on all of their games. So like yeah. I, I I understand why. If they have one Western studio, it's not going to be able to de to develop a full game. They'd probably need their help with little things here yeah. or there, localization and whatnot on all of their games, or a lot of little game, a lot of little help with all with a lot of games. Yeah, I will say the first Mario vs Donkey Kong was very good. I never. And after that, it was like after that it was like the March of the Minis, and like and they were basically taken over by the Minis, which were the minions of that series. That was like, please, but, Daddy Nintendo, let us develop a game. And they were like, fine, yeah. here, do whatever you want with this. All right, next is Nintendo of Europe Research and Development, uh, also known as Nerd. Nintendo of Europe Research and Development. Now, now Nerd. If, if you think that the Americans have it bad, <laughs> see how they treat Europe. Uh. Nerd mostly handles the development of emulators and other non-game software for Nintendo. Their work Whoa. includes the emulators on the NES and SNES Classic Consoles, Switch Online, and the 3D All-Stars Collection, the VR part of Labo, the heart rate detection in Ring Fit Adventure, and the AR part of Mario Kart uh, Home Circuit. We're not allowed to use that word. The E word? Emulator? Ah. Well, it's, it's okay if Nintendo does it. It's okay if Nintendo does I it. bet they never call it that. They probably have no. some wacky version of that word. Yeah, it's it's probably like uh, console recreation software or something stupid. It's probably, yeah, or a virtual console. <laughs> so I, I, this seems like a good opportunity to rant about my last video. I did that video on the DS, uh, how, yes. how to put ROMs and stuff on a 3DS. Um I just got a lot of weird comments. People telling me I'm wrong about things I never talked about in the fucking video. <laughs> a lot of people telling me I can make each ga each game if I wanted to, uh, uh, like a, like its own icon on the 3ds, okay. which I don't want to do because I have hundreds of ROMs. Why would I want to do that? <laughs> yeah. Also, people telling me that the ROMs, uh, the emulators, run better if I do it a certain way but they all ran great so i didn't see a need to do that some people were telling me well some people were telling me i'm wrong about game boy advance emulation which i wasn't because i never said it was bad i just said a certain core was bad but people were telling me that a 3ds has game boy advance hardware in it so you can run 
the I I I know where I see that face. <laughs> They're saying that the Game Boy the the 3DS has Game Boy Advance hardware in it, so that so there's a way you can make it so that the Game Boy Advance games run off of that chip, which is not true. It has DS hardware in it, excluding the Game Boy Advance portion of the DS hardware. So it's emulating off of the DS chip. I don't know how accurate that is. I think the software or like the hardware cores that emulate GBA games in a DS Mm -hmm. are still in the hardware of the 3DS. I don't think so. I forgot. Because that's part of the reason why there were GBA games in the Ambassador program. But, but th- yeah, yeah, that's exactly the reason. It, there were like barely any GBA games there because they had to emulate them. They were not running off of hardware. They were simulated because they were simulated off of the DS hardware that was in there. But the DS hardware is built on top of GBA hardware. The the DS DSs had GBA hardware sandwiched in there, similar to how uh, original PlayStation threes had PlayStation ones in there. Right. And it and you're taking that out when you make a 3DS because it doesn't need the Game Boy Advance hardware because it doesn't have a Game Boy Advance port. It needs the DS mm-hmm. part. So it has the DS chip, but not the Game Boy Advance chip. Uh, I found an article that explains the whole thing. I don't know if you want me to read it now because we're so in the did I. Of so did I. That's but... what I'm regurgitating. Is the article <laughs> that said that it's it's being si- they they the article I read called it simulating off of the DS, which is right. What's the difference between simulated and emulated? It's the same uh, thing. F- yeah. So 3DS what, what, hardware isn't engineered to play Game Boy Advance games. As a result, a few GBA games available to the ambassadors aren't emulated. They're simulated. Your life, LifeWire is that what you're reading? Yes. Yes. Okay. Because they're being simulated from the DS hardware. Okay. Which is fucking emulation. What's the difference? <laughs> Sometimes when I take a sip of something, I let go, and then it splashes back and hits me in the face. Is that the worst? That's terrible. No, the worst is when you take a sip and you get it all down your shirt, like what happened to me yesterday. (laughs) The worst is doing it in front of 300 people on the internet. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Basically, I was annoyed because all of these people are telling me that I'm wrong about things that I'm A, not wrong about, and B, never even said. (laughs) It's It's very annoying. Yes. But also... All of the stuff that I emulated ran great, except for N64 stuff. And there was another thing. People were telling me it would run good if I did it a certain way. And then other people are saying, no, that still doesn't run good. <laughs> so I don't I don't know. It's hard being a content creator out here. Yeah. Anyway, nerd, European research and development, they do the emulation stuff. Yeah. <laughs> they they were the ones responsible for the, the NES and Super NES classics. And yes. that stuff was then used for Nintendo Switch Online, I believe. Yes, that's exactly what it says. Yes, it is what it says. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, and then they also did Ring Fit. Uh, they did the heart rate detection. Oh, so just, just part of it then. Yeah, so they, they do like the emulator and the non-game software is what uh this calls it so like okay. things they can use in a game or for a game that are not necessarily gameplay right if that makes sense okay interesting so very that's the boring stuff <laughs> yeah <laughs> except for the emulation i feel like that would be kind of fun to work on yeah that'd be interesting did they do uh, 3d that- all-stars they did actually do 3D yes All-Stars. yes they did Next is Monolith Soft, which is not to be confused with Warner Brothers Monolith Productions, which I always confuse them with. Monolith Soft grew quickly during the 2010s to become Nintendo's biggest studio and a key player in the development plans. 
Monolith Soft projects include the Xenoblade Chronicles series, whose fourth entry, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, is slated for release in September 2022. Besides that, Monolith is a supporting developer in a lot of Nintendo titles, most notably Breath of the Wild and its sequel, as well as Animal Crossing New Horizons and Splatoon 2. Wow. Oh, wait. Okay. Wait. Oh, supporting. Okay. Yeah. yeah, remember I was asking who the hell did Splatoon 2? Monolith Soft supported. <laughs> so Monolith Soft must have worked with EPD5. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there will be a test at the end of this. Yeah. Um. Okay, that seems like they did a lot of different stuff also. Well, I mean supporting. I mean, that's not a big deal. Um. Well, yeah, their, their main focus is the Xenoblade series, but like... Right. I do know they did a lot of support with Breath of the Wild because they right. they have experience in big open world games, obviously. I mean, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of similarities. Uh, they they yeah. look pretty similar. Uh, the big open world of Xenoblade versus Breath of the Wild. Um, okay, next level games. Uh, one of Nintendo's most recent acquisitions, this Canada-based studio has been a longtime partner. Uh, it seems their recent work on Luigi's Mansion 3 convinced them to be acquired altogether. They're currently working on Mario Strikers Battle League. Nice. A revival of their first Nintendo published project. Very cool. Yeah. That was a good purchase so, by Nintendo. Yeah. Good on them. Uh, uh, so next somebody, Jeffrey Sorensen in the chat says, what does it mean to support a game? It just means they're uh, not the main developer, but they're doing some help they're supporting they're yes. doing they're doing a little bit of, of work on it yeah they're not the so main like in, people working on it but they're just helping out so like in the case of the legend of zelda the epd team did a bulk of the work but they called in monolith soft for support basically right. to help i don't know create parts of the game to lend their expertise on making open world games things like that like you guys aren't running this podcast no. but you are supporting us by being here and asking us questions. <laughs> yes. Uh, next is ND Cube. Uh, once the developer of Wii Party after Konami's acquisition with, of Hudson, uh, ND, ND Cube was promoted to developer of the Mario Party series, ushering in an era of mediocre to bad party games. <laughs> That's this guy's uh, words. Yes. Recently, however, their output saw a sharp increase in positive reception, specifically 2020's Clubhouse games and last year's Mario Party Superstars. Rumors based around a YouTube survey suggest Superstars might be getting DLC later this year, so they could be working on Mario Party DLC. People like Hooray. Superstars, I think, but that was only because the one before that was so bad. Well, isn't Superstars the one with like a collection of all the old Mario Party games? Wait, do I have it backwards? Which one's the one with... I believe Super... Yeah, Superstars is the collection. So yes. that one's the one people like. The one yes. before that, is it Super Mario Party? I think so. That one sucks. <laughs> that one's straight up... I mean, I hate all Mario Party games. Yeah. But Super Mario Party was just garbage. Yeah, Super Mario Party was bad. I think yeah. it was pretty general. It was pretty much the consensus was that's a bad game. Also, yeah. Clubhouse games, people like that. I was pretty disappointed in it. Uh, it's like a it's like an okay game to like have at a party or whatever. But yeah, it felt know, like for, a for your dad. Yeah, it felt like a collection of Flash games, and it was only good because we were lacking Nintendo Switch Sports. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i i uh, nd cube uh uh we gotta we gotta step it up there yeah they don't make the best games but they do make you know they make games people seem to enjoy for the most part <laughs> we party <laughs> all right maybe nobody not like that the, either yeah <laughs> Weird. All right, I take it back. Uh, next is Retro Studios. Ah, everybody loves Retro. Yeah. Uh, coming from Humble Beginnings as a partially owned studio whose founder, uh, the creator of the guide game, Jeff Spangenberg, embezzled Nintendo resources to host a porn website. Uh, Retro became one of what Nintendo's most celebrated studios uh, and their biggest Western subsidiary. 
Their claim to fame is the Metroid Prime series and their outstanding revival of Donkey Kong Country. They are currently working on an internally higher... They are currently working on the eternally hiring new people development of Metroid Prime 4 after the project was handed over to them after two years of unsuccessful development under an undisclosed team widely believed to be Bandai Namco Singapore and Japan. There's a lot riding on this Metroid Prime 4. Yeah. I think I saw somewhere uh, Metroid Prime 4... Since the the announcement that they were starting over till now was longer from when they first announced Metroid Prime 4 to the announcement that they were starting over. That is sad. Yeah. That's pretty sad. So, I mean, they were probably working on Metroid Prime 4 for a long time before that announcement. Right. Before, the, like, the original announcement. So, and it takes, like, what, five years to make a game now anyway? So, it makes sense. It, but, it's it, Metroid Prime Four is is dangerously close to that territory where it's been so long the hype is too real that I can't imagine like it it can't live up to it. Well, it's I getting like, to that point. I feel like as soon as they show something right. of the game, like like actual gameplay, then the hype will be like will go back up again, and people will be excited for it. Mm-hmm. So, but until then, it just exists in our minds. And I, I, our minds are dangerous places. I have no doubt that it's going to be a great game, but yeah, it's just the tension is building. They got to release something. Yeah. Uh, next, we got One Up Studios, formerly known as Brownie Brown, this Japanese yeah. studio transitions no. from uh, developing RPGs for Nintendo handhelds to a full time support studio, having worked on titles like Super Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury. Uh, Animal Crossing: New Horizons and Ring Fit Adventure. So this this is just a support studio now. They're not really working on anything. They're they're there if a team needs them. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. And then we have SRD. Uh, software research and development has been one of Nintendo's closest partners. With the relationship between the two companies dating back to '83. Wow. Uh, despite SRD's offices being housed inside Nintendo's Kyoto Development Center. SRD wasn't acquired until February of this year. They've been a support studio Whoa. for decades. They they worked on the NES port of Donkey Kong. And yeah. they just purchased now. That's crazy. That's insane. I wonder what else they've worked for. Like they must not have only done Nintendo stuff. No. Right? No. If if they've been uh, around that long. What they're called Software research and development. That's that's the worst thing to Google. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm get I'm never I'm never gonna get anything with that. I don't even see them on their Wikipedia page. I see nerd. I see Nintendo software technology. I, see retro. I'm never gonna find this. Yeah, I want to know what else they've worked on. I'm, but I'm never gonna find a, a list. Yeah. I don't think we need to keep going. There's second party no. studios. Uh, I mean, what's what's Hal working on? We can at least go there. Uh, their latest release, Kirby and the Forgotten Land, re- uh, released less than a week ago. However, 2022 is Kirby's 30th anniversary, and both Hal and Nintendo have announced plans to celebrate it. Whether this means merch, live events, or whatever um, remains to be seen. So they just released the game, Hal. Right. So we have no so, idea what they're doing now. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, Intelligent Systems, which is the Fire Emblem studio, they're currently overseeing uh, Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes uh, by Koei Tecmo. Uh, what else? Indie Zero, uh, the current developer Brain Age. They also made NES Remix, Susie Striker, and the Rhythm. Uh, but th- that's not a word. The <laughs> Rhythm Final Fantasy games. Ah, yes, of course. Yeah. Also, Game Freak is working on a bunch of shit, but uh, yeah, I wouldn't count that. That's uh, yeah, it's more so the po- it's all Pokemon stuff. Yeah. Uh, then there's like Grezzo, uh, who made uh the Link's Awakening remake and the Switch version of Metopia. DNA, who's Nintendo's mobile developer. Uh, they are current. They are. In charge of Animal Crossing Pocket Camp, Mario Kart Tour, and Pokemon Masters. 
Of course, Platinum uh, Games, a third party studio, is working on Bayonetta 3. Yes. Uh, Ubisoft, Mario Plus Rabbids. Uh, Bandai Namco, longtime partners of Nintendo. Uh, it is currently unknown if they are working on Nintendo IP, but chances are that they are. <laughs> Okay. And yeah, and I, then and then it goes into like actual third party, like Sega, Grasshopper, Square Enix. The last thing on this list is Team Cherry, Australian indie studio behind Hollow Knight, currently hard at work on the eternally not here follow up Hollow Knight <laughs> Silk Song, slated for release eventually. Back when it was first revealed in 2019, Team Cherry confirmed the game would be a timed console exclusive for the Switch. Shout out to user Dr. Grimm for telling me that last part because I didn't know. I didn't know either that it was going to be a timed exclusive. Okay, so that's every... That's it. Uh, there's, uh, again, there's more on on here that we didn't read uh, from second and third party studios, but yeah. uh, it's everything that you kind of need to know for the first parties, what they're working on. Again, there's a lot of yeah. stuff that we don't know that isn't public information. So if you want to check it out yourself, it's Reddit user Fluff Bluff with four F, five Fs. <laughs> Fluff Bluff. Uh, I'll also just link it in the chat. Why not? Beep, boop, beep, boop, bop. So yeah, check it out if you want more of that. Um, anyway, we got people to thank. Uh, God, I'm always, I don't know. Oh, Winter Chimp with 100 bits. Bob, did you watch the Grammys? Or Will? I definitely did not. Uh, no, I'm only interested in award shows if um, there's violence. Yeah, it's like hockey. So. Like, I only yeah. like sports if people are beating the shit out of each other. <laughs> no, I did not watch the Grammys. I do not care for award shows. I do not know music, like, yeah. anymore. At all. You ever try the hurdle? It's like Wordle, but no. it's so it's music. No. So so like it plays like a second of a song. Yeah. And then uh and then it'll play you another second and another second and you have to try to guess. Uh I am horrible at that. <laughs> Cuz it's like pop music. Yeah. Um I don't, I don't know, I saw a tweet and then this is in my tweet for the show. I was a history teacher saying there's she was teaching about World War 1. And she she asked the class, okay, whose assassination kicked off World War One? I'll give you a hint. <laughs> His name is now the name of a band. Right. And the class said, is it Archduke Metallica? <laughs> <laughs> and that hurts oh, for many no. reasons. Chief among them is that Franz Ferdinand is one of my favorite bands. That's that's upsetting. Yeah. It's just I want to cry and listen to Franz Ferdinand all night. <laughs> Um. Anyway, something interesting won a Grammy that we'll talk about later. Um, yes, McRib King, thank you for the three months. I hate that too. I want to be able to use my phone to sub on mobile. I'm sorry. I think you just do exclamation point sub. I think that works. Um, Majin Jameson, thank you for the three months. C J Gabriel, thank you for the sixteen months. Sweet sixteen months. Um. James on disc, thank you for the prime. Stem J, thank you for the two months. Thank you for a great podcast. My staff is listening to you guys live in my coffee shop. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh, has this become a coffee podcast? <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> Somebody in the chat before I asked, I, I watched while we were talking about the games here. Yeah. Someone in the chat was asking about what coffee we've been drinking yeah what coffee brand we use uh i still have a trade subscription but i've been mm -hmm. drinking more coffee lately and i have not upped my subscription so mm -hmm. it's a mix between whatever trade gives me and lately i've been getting brooklyn roasting company today is like their columbia blend but at home i have their iris espresso which is very good so my wife and i we like to buy the big bulk uh dunkin donuts coffee <laughs> like the big the big like orange our tub Yes, like except we actually make it. We don't go out and get it. So how different is it when you make it's it? It's not. 
<laughs> it's not different. It tastes the same. The only difference is I don't have to put pants on to get it. <laughs> Our parents are very old now, and yes. they get Dunkin' Donuts twice a day, probably, and they have twice to today. go get it. It's not it the same if they make the it. Store. Yeah, and it has to be Dunkin' Donuts. It can't be anything yeah. else. It can't be Starbucks. It can't be McDonald's. It can't be any other type of reasonable coffee. 7 Eleven coffee's not bad. It can't be that. It, which it, it, it hurts my pretentious self because I'm very particular about my coffee. Yeah. Um, I, mean, I mean, I'm just annoyed when they ask me to go get it, but I know. It's usually me. That. Yeah. Um, Ray Zeflin, thank you for the 42 months. Blackbird, thank you for the four months. I'm nearly an audio exclusive listener, but stopped to stop by to resub. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. We for, appreciate you, Blackbird. Thank you for, for doing stopping that. by for the fourth month. I appreciate it. Flo, thank you for the Prime subscription. Uh, Go Fish Goldfish is this might sound crazy, but Target brand coffee, good and gather, is actually very enjoyable. It is. I like to get that for the summer when we make cold brew and we get the nice flavored cold brew coffee. That is actually very good. Uh, very good coffee. It's inexpensive. Um, it tastes good, and yeah, I would I would recommend you try that out. Maybe I, not you, Bob. But so I, when you tell me that you use it for cold brew, that I use my garbage beans for cold brew <laughs> because whenever I make cold brew, I always try to make it flavored anyway. Cause like, I don't yeah. like just drinking it black. So I might as well just use whatever bullshit beans I got left over. So like cold brew to me is just the dregs of whatever I have left. Well, I mean, because cold brew, you have to like, let it sit for like two days. Right. Right. So, but yeah, There's... I would, I agree. Good and gather coffee is actually very good. Even hot, it's good. I don't know what I just got from trade because I'm still I'm still winding down on my uh, Iris espresso at home. Yeah, at the studio I have I I've, I've been getting a, a Brooklyn Roasting Company coffee because we're close to a Brooklyn Roasting Company. Uh, anyway, moving on, we have more video game stuff to talk about. Believe it or not, yes, on this coffee uh, podcast. Yes. Uh, like, for example, Microsoft is moving ahead with a Game Pass family plan. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm going to only assume that you included this article because you want me to start a family plan. <laughs> no, I included this because this is news. But thank you for starting a family plan, Bob. I <laughs> I appreciate it. Your niece and nephew will thank you when they start right. playing video games. Right. Uh, rejoice, Xbox fans! For Microsoft is about to plug. Uh, an annoying gap in its Xbox Game Pass service. Game Pass is Microsoft's all-you-can-eat Netflix-like game subscription service, giving you access to hundreds of games, blah, blah, blah. Multiple plans give you games across PC, Xbox, or cloud. Uh, yes, we know this already. Give us the news. One glaring omission with Game Pass uh, historically has been the lack of any sort of Game, pa game Pass family plan, uh, which would let you share access to the service among the household. We've written about the need for such a plan before, especially since Nintendo offers a family plan for its online service and platforms like Disney Plus and Netflix via its multi-stream plan uh, have done it for years now. Uh, I've heard about Microsoft's desire to create a family plan quite a while ago at this point, although there are details to work out about how royalties might be distributed, how licensed from third-party publishers will be compensated for users who weren't attached to the main plan. According to trusted sources within Microsoft, uh, we can now confirm that my Xbox is moving forward with a Game Pass family plan, uh, which could be set to launch sometime this year. Uh, from our information, paying a higher t paying on a higher tier for a Game Pass family plan will net access for five players for games across the entire library and will be far cheaper than paying for five separate Game Pass accounts as is necessary today. Utilizing game, uh, use, utilizing Microsoft's family account system already in use for Office 365, players <laughs> within the same country will be able to play together using a single Game Pass subscription managed by a central account holder in much the same way uh, as similar services. Some details remain unclear from now, 
Uh, for example, will there be a separate family plan for a PC Game Pass and Xbox Game Pass? Or will it all be exclusive to Game Pass Ultimate? And the exact pricing is unknown as of this writing. Besides that, it will reportedly be far cheaper than paying for separate accounts. Uh, we're not sure when this will all be announced, but it does seem as though Microsoft is readying to make this public uh, relatively soon. So we don't know a price. And, right. But we do and we know don't it'll know be full details. But we do know it'll be five players, which is yes. less than Nintendo's crazy eight players. <laughs> yes. That is a lot. Eight is a lot. Yeah. I, I don't think eight should be expected. But five, uh, five's decent. I mean, hopefully five it's is... not too much more. No. Uh, it, they said it'll be cheaper than buying five separate Game Pass subscriptions. So hopefully it'll only cost like, you know, hopefully the, the, the cost of like three at most. Hopefully it's cheaper than two. That's what the, the family yeah. plan for Nintendo Switch Online is cheaper than two subscriptions, which is the only reason we have it. True. So, I wonder, did Xbox Live Gold have a family plan? I thought that did. Why didn't we have that, if that was the case? That's a good point. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't know what is going on with Xbox Gold now. Right. So, so let me get this straight. If, if, if we were playing on the same Xbox, but only I had Game Pass... And I downloaded Forza Horizon Five. Only I mm-hmm. would be able to play it. I think so. Lame, because it would it would see that my I did not have Game Pass because there, I did not have like the token to unlock. Because when you download a game from Game Pass, it'll say Game Pass on the the box art. Because c- because there's a thing where like you know if you purchase a game, then I get to play it. Yeah. But only on the main console. If you have any other consoles, it, it gets weirder. Uh, Brutal yeah. Beast says, yes, gold has a family plan. Okay. Uh, Sardi says, no, my kids can play just a downloaded Forza. What does that mean? As long as one member on a console has Game Pass, any user can play it on the console. That's what Ray oh. is saying. Okay. Only on your home Xbox. So you get one Xbox in order to, your main Xbox, I guess. Yeah, so I would have to come to your house, log yeah. into my, my account, and then I'd be able to play Forza. Yeah. Um, okay, well, that's good news. Yeah. So so fa- this family plan? Okay, so this family plan could mean one or two things. One, it's not a family plan as much as it is a multiple house plan. Or, or- a multiple Xbox plan. Because if I have my true, own Xbox true. and my kids have their own Xbox, that's a better point. Share Game Pass. Yeah, that's a better point. But I'm sure people who are going to use this are going to have multiple Xboxes. Because like these days, yeah, you have your own Xbox. When your kids get older, they're going to have their own console too. Yeah. Um, but I was also thinking they might get rid of that feature where <laughs> where uh, multiple people on a console could play the Game Pass game. True. That might that might be. Uh, that we might be losing that um just like how netflix is trying to get rid of uh multiple accounts or whatever yeah um i have i uh, you know it sneaks up on you how many xboxes you have <laughs> like yeah uh, my little xbox app i have like four xboxes on there i still have i i've been meaning to sell my xbox one s but it's still sitting there in the basement, even though I transitioned over to the One X. I'm right. like, do I keep it? Do I put it in my office? Do I put it upstairs? I turn no, it into a PC. It. Could do that. And speaking of this Office 365 thing, I don't know when the last time you like booted up a Windows computer. That it's incre- like putting Windows on a PC is very predatory. They really want you to upgrade to Windows 11. They really want you to buy Office 360, and they really want you to use uh, their version of iCloud. All of um, that, when you start up the computer, it like defaults to you selecting yes on buying yeah. all of this shit. It's yeah, like and I, I've, heard, I've heard they made it like really harder to use uh, any browser other than Edge, uh, which sucks. Yeah, they give you like four different prompts that are like, "Don't do, please don't." <laughs> Yeah. Um, um, yeah, I have the only Windows PC I currently work on is my work PC that I got from my job. So 
has got all like the corporate logouts and whatnot to right. not have all the pop-ups telling me to use one one drive <laughs> and all this other crap. Right. And, and and it's very easy to accidentally stumble into like OneDrive and yeah. uh, into accidentally downloading Windows 11. <laughs> I mean, I have a OneDrive account. I've used it. OneDrive itself is not bad. It's inoffensive. And if like you're going to have, you know, a Windows computer and an Xbox, it's it makes sense. But Dropbox is better, Google Drive is better, uh iCloud is better if it's even if it's more expensive. You know, there's just all these other better versions of it. My big problem with OneDrive is that they put it on the sidebar mm-hmm. and it mimics your documents already so it's really yeah. easy to accidentally put things in there instead of your actual documents folder and shit my biggest problem <laughs> so i had to turn all drive, that stuff off my biggest problem with OneDrive was initially they offered you 15 gigs for free and then they downgraded everybody to five <laughs> Wow. And that sucks. Brutal B says, doesn't Microsoft also own Dropbox now? Is that true? I've been using Dropbox no. for like 10 years. No, they do not. Um, anyway, uh, cool. I'll look into the Game Game Pass family plan. If it's cheaper than getting two, then that's a possibility. Um, otherwise, I don't see a, a purpose in that. Yeah. Maybe I'll actually be able to play Halo Infinite. Or Perfect Dark, if it ever comes out. We can't seem to escape talking about uh, subscription services on consoles. Nope, it's in the news, Bob. Uh, But this is a bad news, because PlayStation (laughs) Premium loophole has been shut down. Oh, no. Yeah, so... What was this loophole that we're speaking of? uh, All right, so I'll read the loophole first. Uh, first brought up by Wario64 on Twitter and verified by uh, a ah. team at IGN Deals, you can still buy 12 months worth of PS Now using a specific link on your web browser, which would auto-convert to 12 months of PS Premium uh, at no extra cost when it launches in June. Sony had previously blocked the option to buy uh, more than one month of PS Now, but this workaround link is still li- or was still live and PS uh, PlayStation users have been quick to stack up on many years of PS Now as they can, are are uh, ready for the one to one conversion in June. Basically, people were buying a year's worth of PS Now, which would which is cheaper than what PlayStation Plus Premium is going to be. So that when the time comes, they could just roll over to PlayStation Plus Premium at a significantly discounted rate. So I remember seeing this. From Wario 64, yeah. and he it looks like he got um 12 months of, of PlayStation now all the way through to 2028. That's and he, insane. And then he got PlayStation Plus to 2024. Uh yeah. Which I assume the PlayStation Plus he already had, probably. Um because I don't know why he would get both. But uh Yeah. Yeah, PlayStation Now, they said your subscription would just roll into the whatever the new one's going to be. Yeah. So uh, I, don't, I don't know how they would handle it. I don't know how they would handle it if you have both PlayStation Now and PlayStation Plus through to at least 2024. Like, that's, that's, I don't understand the math there. I mean, that deal would have had to have ended sooner, like, at some point. Right. I highly doubt in 2028 they would still honor it. Right. But, because most people don't stack their subscriptions like this. Well, it it would, they would have had to do it immediately. They would have had to nix PlayStation Now and PlayStation Plus and and convert it, like, immediately. So, I don't know. Uh, But it doesn't matter because Sony has... Uh, fix the exploit and you can no longer do that ah, you can pants. no longer buy a year of ps plus oh uh, sorry you can no longer buy a year of ps now uh, in order to take advantage of this so too bad you should have gotten it in on the ground floor rip i did think yeah. about it i considered it but uh i didn't pull the trigger yeah. quick enough yeah i mean i think i'll be fine without it <laughs> 
It was a little confusing. Like I didn't, and also like not. It was confusing, and also I was skeptical. Like if I go to 2028, maybe I'm just wasting my money. Who knows if they're going to honor it? Yeah, then, you know. Yeah. Um. So you might you're at this point you are just better off waiting and seeing what this service actually has to offer. Right. Yeah. Um. Before we move on, let's say a special thank you to Flow797 for the Prime and Khalil Jama for the 16 months. Love having this gaming podcast as my weekly routine. What's your favorite podcast you guys like to listen to? It's been a while since I've listened to a podcast. Yeah, I haven't listened to a podcast in years. Um, That's not true. Years. I haven't followed one regularly in years. I've dipped in and out of other podcasts. Um a Street podcast I've listened to. Um, yeah, I listened to Mr. Beast on Joe Rogan. That was cool. <laughs> um, what else? What? Who else have I listened to? Bill Burr every once I, in a while. I was listening to the AV Club podcast, but only specific episodes on specific movies that I wanted to say. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I guess I I watch slightly something else on the escapist if you consider that a podcast it's more just two dudes talking lately i've if i need like to kill time for like an hour like i'll listen to a twitch stream or something i I don't i don't really like uh haven't put on a podcast in a really long time i guess like if the wet since the weather is getting nicer and like i have to start doing yard work again i'll start listening to podcasts i was listening sorry so get this there was a there's a Batman podcast called Batman the Radio Adventures. Okay. And I listened to the first two episodes on Apple Podcasts and it was really good and I wanted to keep listening to it. Apple Podcasts only has the first two episodes and other podcast services only have the first two episodes. If you okay. want to listen to the entire show, you have to listen to it on HBO Max. <laughs> That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> It's an HBO Max exclusive series. Basically, the first two episodes are just like uh, given away for free as like a teaser. But is it a video format? No, it's a, it's a it's a radio adventure. It's called Batman: The Radio Adventures. <laughs> so what is it? Just a black screen? Like how does that work? It's, it's an image of one. Of, it's a cartoon drawing of one of the characters. <laughs> that's, Each that's, episode. That's bizarre. That's very bizarre. Yeah, I don't understand it. And I don't even know if like HBO Max has like you, you shut the the screen off and it keeps playing feature. Mm-hmm. I just I don't want to deal with that while while I'm trying to listen listen to a podcast. Right. Very weird. Yeah. Yeah, otherwise I don't have like a go-to podcast. I just jump around a lot. Yeah. Um the Wolfden podcast is cool. Highly recommend it. Thanks. Dude. Yes, everybody listen to that. <laughs> um anyway. Uh we got more news like E3 yeah. getting canceled. Goodbye. See yes. you later. Bob, Don't give a shit. Bob about wins you. again. <laughs> Bob wins again. <laughs> uh in a tweet from Will Powers, the PR for gaming peripheral manufacturer Razor. Um, he said, just got an email. It's official. E3 digital is officially canceled for 2022. Lots of mixed feelings about this. I got to pee. You read this. I know everything already. All right. The video game trade show and marketing event was originally scheduled to be held in person this year. However, in January, E3 once again shifted from an in-person event to an online only uh, exhibition due to the pandemic. Now it seems that the digital event has also been completely canceled. Uh, there have been growing concerns about the fate of E3 uh, from the last few years. The COVID-19 pandemic continues to impact in-person gatherings, making the prospect of a very large and famously packed event unattractive. Last week, a number of video game industry professionals reportedly tested positive for COVID after attending the Game Developers Conference in San Francisco. In addition to pandemic concerns, video game publishers have increasingly withdrawn from E3 in favor of hosting their own online events like Nintendo Directs, uh, EA Play Live, and Sony State of Play. As news of E3's cancellation broke, 
Uh, consummate video game hype man Jeff Keighley uh, smoothly stepped in to announce his Summer Games Fest is confirmed for June this year. Uh, in a tweet, Jeff Keighley said, excited to share that Summer Games Fest will return in June with a slate of events. Jeff Keighley, E3's go-to guy for years. With the demise of E3, he just slips in and goes, hey, I got a new thing. And it ain't E3, baby. So, uh, uh, so everybody is saying that it's official. Um, but it has not come from the horse's mouth yet. So, at, I was just like, actually just about to read the last paragraph of the article, which says, according to a tweet from Axios' Steven Totillo, the ESA said E3 will return in 2023, uh, with an inv- a reinvigorated showcase that celebrates new and exciting video games and industry innovations, and it will be both online and in person. So, first of all, that is now the third time they've said that. <laughs> that was the third time that they're saying it's going to be in person, so I don't believe them. Um, but... Uh, that's the extent of their statement was to somebody else. They haven't made like a statement on their own like they did last year where they just said, we're not doing yeah. it anymore. Sorry. Um, so I'm hoping that the video games industry as a whole uh, is is learning that they don't need this shit. And I think that's why yeah. they're not doing it this year. I, th- I think they totally could have. Um, but all of these game companies are realizing we don't need you. Even the yeah. last E3 that happened... Uh, what was that? 2019? 2019. Uh, they did an online one last year. But who cares? <laughs> they did? Didn't it? Wasn't it horrible? I It, it must be because I don't remember it. Wait, no, no. I, they canceled it last year. Oh, Wikipedia says they did, they did one last year. I don't think they did. I think they canceled it. I, we had a whole fucking uh, uh, podcast episode. They canceled the in-person. No, they did. I remember uh, fucking Greg Miller and Golden Boy were on stage and like they hosted the whole thing. Oh. I remember this. Yeah, Microsoft was the only person, only like company that had anything. That's where they showed Starfield being exclusive. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, um, E3 sucks. Uh, they deserve, uh, worse than what they're already getting. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's a terrible convention to go to. Uh, it's, it's it horribly, really is. it's horribly organized. Uh, they, 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 uh, they, 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 they treat their, their guests like, like garbage. Um, it's a pain in the ass to get around. It's a pain in the ass to do anything. It's a pain in the ass to see any of the games. Uh, the best thing ever was just being able to sit home and have the demos just released to the general public. Um, yeah. And uh, none of these companies need to be at this convention. They had to pay so much just to be there. And the ESA needed the companies more than the companies needed the ESA. So yeah. uh, after a while, companies started pulling out and then the catastrophe of 2019 happened um, where they doxed everybody who attended. (laughs) No, they doxed specifically the media that attended, you know, the ones who you shouldn't dox um, faced almost zero repercussions for that. Uh, And then the following year COVID happened uh, and people started to realize, Oh wait, we could have just done this ourselves. We didn't have to pay out the ass. So, uh, good. I'm glad uh, that it's canceled, and I hope it never comes back. E3 was like one of those things where, like, <laughs> as ki- as kids, we always wanted to go because it, it presented itself as, as like this exclusive, illustrious wonderland where you can go and see video games before they came out. Yeah, and it was only for a select group of people to go and see. Yeah, until and then, you go. And we, then... <laughs> yeah, and then we actually went, and the reality was, you know, it, it shatters that illusion really fast. Right. So, yeah. so, so, so uh, another problem is that, like, we started going uh, 
after they already opened it to the public. Like, I think I went a yeah. year before they opened it to the public, and then they opened it to the public. Um, and whenever we talk about this, people are like, oh, you just don't want the public to be there. No. Like, I'm not trying to gatekeep E3. I think yeah. PAX is a much better convention because it's open to the public and it's set up to be that way. E3, yeah. um, it it it's this it's, weird it's, sort of hodgepodge and it makes it so that it hurts both communities. It hurts both of yes. the of the groups of people. It's a pain yes. in the ass for 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 the general public, and it's a pain in the ass for the media who's trying to get their their jobs done. Yeah, that so. that's what it is. It's it still thinks it's the the exclusive media only event, right. but it's also trying to be like PAX or Comic Con at the same time, and it, it can't be both. Yeah, it can't. It's it's. It's a disaster. Um, and yeah, they, they were like, it was hard for us to get in basically every year, even though we were the media. Yeah. Whereas PAX is for the public and it's the easiest thing in the world for the media to get into. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't, I, I don't, I don't know. There's no reason for E3 to exist. Um, yeah. I think that any of the demos that are at E3, just put it on the internet, let the public see it first. There's no reason why that all that stuff needs to be distilled through media people. It should just be let off to the general public. The only reason they don't do that is because they don't want the general public to uh, 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 data mine it. But fucking don't be a little bitch. Just let them, let just just give it to the people and let them uh, come to their own conclusions. You're probably going to be better off in, the in demo- most of the situations. Yeah. Sorry, you froze for like a while and I just ranted. Okay. Uh, and now you're gone. <laughs> okay. Hello? Hello. Bye. Hi. Hello. Yes. Hey. Uh, all right. What I'm trying to say is the reason why they don't release all the demos out to the public is because a lot of the time they're not finished. And they're trying to control the messaging of right. uh, you know, what they're putting out there. I'm sure I could talk about this. It's been years and everyone knows it by now. Avengers. <laughs> I waited on a very long line. No, seriously. I waited on a very long line to see a behind closed doors demo of Avengers that was hands off and you couldn't record what was happening. You couldn't record what they were doing on screen, even though you know there were no technical issues with the demo because they were trying to you know, they're basically trying to sell this version of the game. That's not the version we actually got. They were trying to sell something different to you and expected you to write what they told you to write. Yeah. yeah, So that, and also I think that they're hoping that the experienced media people can see through some of the brokenness that a demo might have and can, and can convey that to an audience better, can distill that information down better. But that's yeah. that's assuming that the general public is dumb. I yeah. I I think well okay I think that most people are stupid. But <laughs> I think that you would I think that a lot of game companies would be way better off just letting the general public play their game instead of giving it to some you know guy who writes articles and letting him tell yeah. them that the game's good. Just let them play it and figure it out for themselves. Especially niche yeah. games that are hard to find an audience for. I think that uh, it would be easier to get people that to get to get your game in the hands of people that will like it if you just let people play it instead of just letting yeah. a journalist play it that might not be into your type of game. Especially if the journalist plays it or like doesn't doesn't play it, isn't allowed to play it, but just writes what they about what they see, right. and then the game comes out and we get our hands on it and it, it's absolute garbage. That's even worse because mm-hmm. you feel like you were lied to. So, so this wasn't this isn't an article that we were going to talk about, but we can talk about it. Um, I did I like it? Maybe I don't know how I could find this. Uh, I saw IGN is hiring. <laughs> oh, uh, who tweeted about this? I think Gilly tweeted about it. Uh, this was making the rounds. Uh, here it is. Uh, so I feel really bad for this person. <laughs> They tweeted, uh, IGN is looking for new freelancers to assist with the daily flow of stories in games, entertainment, tech, and science. $20 base rate per story. Sliding scale for heavier reporting. DM with an introduction to portfolios for details. 
that was probably the worst way she could have worded this. <laughs> yeah. Like $20 is shockingly low for right. publication on a major news outlet. Right. So, so, so like, I don't know what the going rate is, but I, it can't be $20. So, so, so I would assume that the $20 is for like a tweet, you know, like, like, like what is, what is essentially yeah. what a tweet is, you know, like, uh, like, like just a quick blurb about a news thing that happened. Um, yeah. But so, so there's another part in the, in this thread where she explains it a little better and she says it can go up to $300. Oh, here it is. Um, $20 for basic news aggregation, $50 for slightly more involved stories, finding uh, us a fun community angle that's not sourced from another outlet social media uh, reacts. Uh, and $300 end up for in-depth multi-source reporting. So when I think in-depth multi-source reporting, I'm thinking of stuff like what Jason Schreier does when he like, you know, does like yeah. exposés on like, uh, you know, games industry happenings. Um, but you think Jason Schreier is getting $300 for those? <laughs> like, yeah. like, I don't think so. Like, uh, well, I mean, I feel like that's a little different in that Jason Schreier is like an experienced professional. Right. Who's like been in doing this for like years. Uh, freelancers. I mean, I shouldn't, I shouldn't generalize like this, but you know, a lot of freelancers, freelance work is like their your first time working. So I understand if it's if the the rate is a little bit lower, but at the same time, twenty dollars is still very low. So, so I mean, you're that's essentially like a paragraph. So I understand that like there's a lot of people who want to work at IGN and mm -hmm. and uh, they would be more than happy to do it for nothing. Um, yeah. So, like, I understand, like, to a certain extent, I understand why the rate would be so low. But, like, um, saying $20 base rate is disgusting. Um, yeah. I guess this would be, I guess you would have to fire out a lot of, like, articles a day for $20. But, like, again, it's freelance. Yeah. You might not even get picked up if you submit, it, if you submit an yeah. article. So that base rate should be a little higher than that. That should be like a $50 base rate and then and then up from there. Yeah, um, definitely. Basic news aggregation, it means like, you know, one person writes a story on one website and then it gets like just stolen from every other news yeah. website. Um, you see that a lot. Like when I end up in friggin' articles, it's uh, one, one website will write an article about my video and then it explodes across all of the other uh game journalism sites yeah um and that i guess is what this is these freaking guys who get paid 20 dollars to just poach from all the other news sites yeah i should have done that when i used to have an office job because i would just sit on twitter all day and refresh <laughs> all these different paid uh, all these yeah. different uh journalism sites i could have just retweeted and fired them off and made 20 bucks <laughs> yeah there you go <laughs> But anyway, uh, yeah, I thought that was pretty uh, sad to see that these people get paid so little. Yeah. I, I, it's almost, I, again, I think the wording was just really bad here. Yeah. But, like, I appreciate them putting the price in True. the tweet because a lot of people don't do that. A lot, of, a lot of people, like, if they offer jobs and stuff, they'll just say, they'll say like, hey... So it's a good rate, and then you find out later. At least here, like they're coming forward with it. I just wish that they didn't come forward with the bad number. Yeah, it's true. Because because by saying twenty bucks, it almost makes you wish she had just said, "Uh, the experience is your payment." Yeah, honestly, you know? I I I feel like uh, I feel like the base rate should be higher than that. Mm -hmm. But again, a lot of people they just copy and paste. Yeah. Which is weird because, like, the biggest crime in journalism is plagiarism, but yes, they do it all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, 
that was just a little fun aside. Anyway, hey, return to Monkey Island. We're returning to it. Wow. Yes, uh, Legendary LucasArts Adventure Series uh, will return later this year with an all-new game, uh, appropriately entitled Return to Monkey Island, headed up by original series creator Ron Gilbert. Wow. Return to Monkey Island is being developed by Gilbert's Terrible Toy Box Studio in collaboration with Devolver Digital and Lucasfilm Games, the legendary studio label resurrected by Disney in 2021. The announcement trailer doesn't reveal anything about the story or why Gilbert agreed to make another Monkey Island game, but the game will follow on from Monkey Island 2, LeChuck's Revenge, so apparently, and will apparently be unrelated to Telltale's 2009 Tales of Monkey Island, the last game in the series. Uh, Gilbert revealed separately that he's been actually been working on Return to Monkey Island for the past two years in complete secrecy. Uh, Gilbert's not the only LucasArts luminary working on the game. Dave Grossman, writer and programmer on Monkey Island, uh, is also taking part. So uh, this is being published by Devolver Digital. I wonder if they're fronting the bill for this. I don't know if it's them or Lucasfilm who's fronting the bill for this. but I don't think Lucasfilm has anything to do with it. Oh, I in mean, collaboration uh, with De- De- Devolver Digital and Lucasfilm Games. Yeah, unless Lucasfilm Games, their only collaboration is licensing out Monkey Island. That could be. But even then, I'm sure they would, you know, for them to do that, I'm sure they would want to have like a say in it and put the, you know, put money towards it. I'm sure that uh, Disney is starting to learn that they have a lot more IP and and a lot more uh, that they could squeeze out if they just release some fucking games. <laughs> yeah. If they yeah. stop. I mean, they kind of stopped making uh, the Star Wars games exclusive to certain studios. Um, yeah. And they have more than that. They have all the Lucasfilm games. So, yeah. yeah. The, the, let them let people have fun with it, and you'll make some money without having to do much. Yeah. Uh, and I think we're starting to see that because we got Bethesda's doing Indiana Jones. We have this. We have uh, Quantic Dream Star Wars game. We got that Ubisoft Star Wars game coming uh, so they're starting to open up and realize also too, like all the Marvel games are made by different studios. So they're starting to open up and realize that, you know, the more people making their games, like the more variety there will be, the better that things can be. Right. Um, uh, and this look, look, I know like we're not monkey Island people at all. Like point and click adventure games are not our cup of tea, but I had to put this in here because I, recognize that monkey allen is an incredibly popular and influential series and this exploded twitter yeah 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 this, like, this, this, was, a shot, huge this was a big deal and i get it i get why it's yeah. a big deal I, i'm not interested in it but uh I'm, yeah. I'm interested that lucas arts is uh doing more stuff that that that, yes. that, that they're uh, letting people uh or lucasfilm games i'm sorry is letting people use yeah. stuff like this so i'm happy that it's coming out yeah uh next we have uh oh the grammy thing we were supposed to talk about yes uh congrats best arrangement instrumental or acapella winner meta knight's revenge from kirby superstar can we, uh hold on how My much of this exploding. how much of this can i listen to uh that's a good question <laughs> I don't even know which version, because this is a cover of it. Yeah. So I don't even know which version I'm, I is the one. But yeah, this is a uh, Kirby Superstar uh, 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 cover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that just won a Grammy for this year's Grammy. All right. Uh, let me see if I can find an article that goes into it more. Uh. Charlie Rosen and Jake Silverman uh, earned a Grammy for Best Arrangement Instrumental or Acapella for their take on Meta Knight's Revenge from the classic 1996 game Kirby Superstar. The arrangement was performed by an aptly named band called the 8-Bit Big Band, a 30 to 65 member orchestra that specializes in putting its own spin on video game music. So I found this on I I found I found it when I searched for it and I was like that can't be it. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, in the past, 8-Bit Big Band has performed Zelda, Zelda's Lullaby from Ocarina of Time, uh, Foresight from Earthbound, Big Blue from F-Zero, and much more. You can listen to the group's performance of the reimagined Meta Knight's Revenge in the video above. It's a really jazzy take on the original track, and dare I say, better than Nintendo's remake in Smash Brothers. Ooh. Uh, it sounds very good so far. I'm listening to it right now. Yeah. Uh... I'm gonna just skip to the middle. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just saying. Uh, this is not the only time video games have been nominated for a Grammy. Uh, the song "Baba Yuta" uh, from Civilization, uh, Civilization Four, won a Grammy after getting re-released in a separate album. The Journey soundtrack was nominated for Best Score uh, for a Visual Media, but lost to "The Girl with a Dragon Tattoo." This video only, it has under 500,000 views. Really? Yeah. It's its fantastic. It's from February well, of last year. Yeah. Well, hopefully more people will listen to it. I, I will, think it's... Uh, drop it I think it's chat. interesting that... I wonder what this was up against. Yeah, what... I Yeah, I don't know anything about this category. There's, the thing about the Grammys is it's never just what you see on TV, there's like a million Grammy awards that get handed out for every little thing in the music industry. Right. So this random ass category is probably buried and it's probably loaded with other people we don't know so, about. So, so Bill O'Connell chopsticks, <laughs> Robin Smith for the love of a princess. Um, Emily, most most Mosari, infinite love and gabriella quintero and rodrigo sanchez of the struggle within those are yeah, the don't know don't know any of that okay all right bob look up their we shop channel theme cover okay i'll look it up later <laughs> um all right i think you linked it Oh my gosh, 30 minutes long? Oh, oh this is awkward of time. This is a different one. Um, anyway, let's, let's plow through more of this. Uh, yeah. 4K output dongle for Switch. This just looks like the Marseille dongle that we've Ah, but it's 4K about this time. Oh, wow. The 4K Gamer Pro is the follow-up to the 4K Gamer Plus, which launched in Asia in 2021. It's a plug-and-play device that takes the 1080p output of the Switch and other devices and converts it to 4K. The 4K Gamer Pro offers a 20% increase in sharpness, coloring, and depth of field compared to the previous model. Um, the manufacturer claims that months of researching and testing have enabled it to drastically improve upon, uh, drastically improve on what it's done before. It does compare, uh, this article does compare it to the Marseille M Classic that's already on the market. Uh, yeah. The 4K out, yeah. Uh, the 4K Gamer Plus. Wait. So, so, so the Marseille can only do 1440p, but yes, if you put two Marseilles next to each other <laughs> in the loop, it can do 4K because it only yeah. does like a half step up, yeah, or I guess a full step. I guess that is a full step up. I don't know. Um, but yeah, technically, this might just be two Marseilles slapped onto each other. <laughs> yeah, because it does look pretty big. Yeah. Uh, apparently, this device will be on Kickstarter in April this month. Uh, they haven't said uh, when or how much it will be, but yeah, there you go. It's interesting to see if this actually does what it says it's going to do. So I'll, I mean, I don't think I'll take a look at it. Um, I checked out the Marseille and it's really good. Um, I just, don't a don't see a need for it because it's yeah. it's really you can't just have algorithmic upscaling. Uh, let's back up a little bit. That's what this is. It's it's a little dongle that uh, that uses like machine learning and some sort of algorithm to sharpen up the edges of whatever's mm -hmm. on screen and make it appear like it's 4K instead of the 1080P that that's there. I have a video yeah. called something like something like uh you don't need a switch pro or the switch pro is here or something it's about the marseille dongle that does essentially the same thing 
but it only does 1440p. I never used it after that because uh, it felt disingenuous to me to like stream a game at 1440p with like a sharper image that and 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 having people then go buy the game and then be like, why doesn't mine look like what he had? Yeah. Um, so. Like it looked good. Like it did a good job. It's just uh didn't seem necessary to me. Especially it's, for the it's price. It's a very the Marseille especially it's a very niche product specifically right. for people who just want that little extra sharpness in their games. It's it's mostly like to show off your home entertainment system is what it's for. Yeah, and I usually only it's, play on a on a monitor anyway. If you have a massive is- TV, then I could see you wanting something like this. But even still, I don't think the average person is going to care all that much about just a little bit extra sharpness. This is clearly a specialty device. Even this 4K version, I don't know. Unless it's like cheaper than the Marseille, I don't see how it's this is going to have like mass appeal. Yeah, I yeah, I don't. Uh, I mean, I don't, it has to. They have to prove that it like does like magic. And yeah, I mean the the screenshot that they have looks pretty pretty good, but it also looks like they just upped the saturation. Yeah, <laughs> that's a problem with the Switch is that uh uh you know the the color the colors are weird. Like uh like yeah. especially if you're capturing or looping it through something, it could look a little weird. Um, but that's something that could be fixed in other ways, like with your TV settings and stuff. I don't know if necessarily yeah. you need a whole ass dongle. Um. I think that there's a lot of TVs releasing now that have technology like this built in it already. So I don't know how much this is really worth it. Well, TVs in general have pretty decent upscaling from like 10, 720p or 1080p up to 4K already. Um, this, I guess, just cleans up the rougher edges and like smooths certain things out. But right. again, the average person is not going to know or care that much to want to go out and buy another thing yeah yeah I, I, yeah, I don't think it's necessary yeah and it's a little late in the switch's life cycle for something like this anyway. true yeah anyway epic games launched unreal yes. Engine five wow uh um, unreal engine 5 is available now to download of uh, the ge- the latest edition of the benchmark games development engine touts a fully dynamic global illumination tool plus a geometry system that allows creators to build games with massive amounts of geometric detail. Wow, this looks crazy. Yeah. And they announced uh, they announced Unreal Engine 5 like a while ago. They showed it off in a big fancy uh, stream. Uh, but now it's actually available for developers to go out and use and make games with. Uh, the biggest, newest technologies in the engine is Lumen, a lighting system, and Nanite, a ge- geometry system, uh, Lumen can deliver believable scenes where indirect light adapts on the fly to changes uh, to directing lighting or geometry. Nanite can bring film quality source art uh, comprising millions of polygons into the game worlds, all while maintaining a real time frame rate and without any noticeable loss in fidelity. Yeah, some of these look like pictures. But every time they they demo a game engine, it looks like real life. So looks better so, than yeah, yeah. You don't really know what you're getting. Like if you look yeah. up demos of Unreal Engine four, they're gonna look identical to this. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I guess it's the lighting that's the big deal and the reflections. Yeah, that's a big thing. Uh, in addition to this, uh, they also announced that. The next Tomb Raider game, which is currently in development at Crystal Dynamics, will run on Unreal Engine 5. Uh, the Witcher 4, uh, again, confirmed it was going to be running on Unreal Engine 5. Uh, and the Coalition, uh, which makes the Gears of War games, reconfirmed their commitment to using Unreal Engine uh, for the next Gears of War game. Uh, and they also showed off their Unreal demo, which I don't remember the name of. So games are already being made with this. Mm-hmm. I believe it's free. Like you can just use it. Yes. Yes. If you, if you want to try developing li- for yourself. I don't remember what the licensing model is because Unity is free. It's one of those things where it's, if you start making money, they want some money. Yeah. You. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, hey, if, you, if you're interested in game development, try it out. Yeah. Because uh, every game is going to look like this. 
Wolf Den Dad watching the Wolf Den waiting in the... I'm not reading. I'm not doxing you. <laughs> Don't dox yourself. <laughs> uh, well, that's good that mom enjoyed her play. <laughs> yes, mom watched a play today. I'm glad that she enjoyed herself. Yes. Uh, anyway. Um... The la- which play? I don't remember. I remember actually. Uh, she said what play, and then I I was like, I heard about this like very recently. Oh, like some famous people are in it. Will froze again. He was so interested in the play. It was like some old timey thing. It's like three dudes, and and it's like it's like a. It's like an eighteen hundreds thing, I think. I don't know. I don't remember. I'm not a play guy. But anyway, uh, the last news we have here is abandoned director speaks out following cancellation rumors. I'm scared. I'm not gonna lie. Oh my god. Uh, I remember this. This is the the one that was supposed to be like uh, it, it, everybody thought it was Silent Hill, but it's not. Hi, I'm back. Hello. I had to move over to Wi-Fi. <laughs> cool. Uh, so this is the game that looked like uh, uh, Silent Hill. And everybody thought it was Silent yes. Hill, but it's not. Yes. Abandoned. Everybody thought it was Silent Hill. Um, and then they said it's not. But, and then everybody hated them. <laughs> yeah. It, it was really weird, this whole situation. And there's been confusion over the future of this game and the Velver Blue Box Studio. Uh, speaking with IGN, Hassan Kar- uh, Karaman of Blue Box Game Studios has said the developer had removed older tweets about the game in a bid to keep information surrounding Abandoned up to date. Basically, the tweets were deleted because some of the concepts have changed, and I figured maybe just deleting the tweets and then tweeting more relevant information would be a better idea, which was actually not a good idea, he said. <laughs> I've learned now uh, just to keep them, even if the information or concept changed. Just keep the older information because people will eventually see them for themselves, what is different, and then uh, see what's more actual. Many fans saw the removal of tweets as bad news, leading some to question the game's existence and deduce it was either canceled or just an elaborate scam. In response to this outcry, Blue Box released a statement addressing the rumors, assuring people it was still coming, addressing it again. Uh, Karaman said it was heartbreaking. He went on to discuss... Uh, abandonment's prologue which uh and emphasized that despite widespread assumption it was it would not be a demo rather it would be its own standalone game with a price tag although according to karaman this uh will be at the low end of the pricing scale as the prologue will only have a couple of hours of gameplay uh yeah so he just he went on to just talk about you know the the history of the game, well, like the controversy surrounding it, and what they're trying, like what not, not exactly what they're trying to do, but what they intended on doing with abandon and its prologue. So so, uh, so he he tweeted, okay, so I did not do a good job doing the interview, but come on, guys, give me a break. This is my first ongoing interview. It was a mess. I had no overview what I wanted to say, and Colin asks A, and I answered B. Uh, like who is funding the project and I talk about the prologue. Basically what I wanted to say was that the project is self-funded and that the prologue is used for further self-funding of the game. Also for those thinking I am an actor, just know I am who I say I am. There is no other truth than this. So it's it, he's, he's still trying to address rumors that uh, this is a fake game. Yeah. <laughs> Which I guess just- is really sad if you're just trying to be a video game developer it's it's a this is a really weird situation and i do not envy this these people for trying to release like when this game gets released like it's like people are not going to be kind to this game no i don't think yeah i mean it sounds like they're trying to do what the pt demo did um, yeah but you're 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 messing with fans of a different project it's not it's yeah. not a good look of a different project and a different creator. Also, uh, Silly Kojima. Yeah. Also, he, uh, I think, did an interview with Dreamcast Guy, but uh, only under the uh, 
pretense that Dreamcast guy did not release the interview. <laughs> <laughs> See, I know he, he did an interview with IGN and a separate one with Con Moriarty on Secret Symbols, and both of them were ah, trying okay. to address the same thing. Okay. Oh, so that's I, I guess he's he's uh, in his tweets he's referencing the Colin interview, the Con Moriarty yes. interview. Yeah. Anyway, Wolf Den Dad in the chat says, "By the way, I'm wearing all my Wolf Den merch: hat, jacket, T-shirt. Available on Wolf Den merch store! Exclamation point! Exclamation point! Hashtag Wolf Den Dad. Thanks, Dad." Check it out at Wolf Den merch store. <laughs> yeah. Wolfdenapparel.com. <laughs> uh, anyway, I have, I'm have i not playing this game. And neither are any of you. This game's never coming out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that is American the... Buffaloes. That's what that's the play. Yeah, who's in it? Lawrence Fishburne, Darren Chris, and Sam Rockwell. Wait. Okay, Sam Rockwell was the guy that Pacini was talking about, I think. Yes, uh, Sam Rockwell from the original Ninja Turtles movie. <laughs> Who's that third guy that I don't know? Darren, Darren Chris. Who's that? He is uh, he was a TV actor primarily. He was in Glee. He was in is this American Is this Crunch. who I think it is? Without No, I don't, never mind. Probably I don't not. Person. He was in American Crime Story, The Assassination of Gianni Versace. He played Versace's killer. Um, he was Raphael in the direct-to-video movie Ninja Turtles vs. Batman. Oh. He's also 5'8". And, <laughs> and, and my wife uh, stood online with him at the concession stand of Waitress on Broadway. Wow. There you go. He, he is best friends with my wife. And probably towered over him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, that's all the news. Yes. It's time for that thing that we do every single week. week do it, boy. Today, this tweet is from Rank 10 YGO, and it's the best, uh, by the way, spoilers for Mobius, by the way. The best part of Mobius was when he said, it's Morbin time, and mormed, and morbed <laughs> all over those guys. Oh, uh, I don't know why that's. I don't know why I like that. <laughs> I'm gonna so have stupid. to see this movie because apparently, no, it's you're not. Fucking nuts. Uh, yeah, I hear terrible things. It, like I've heard one person say it was good, and it's my friend who is a diehard Morbius fan. Okay, you so, can't be that. That's not a thing you could be. Oh no, he is. <laughs> is this Jake? It's of course it's Jake. Okay, okay. Um, I know Anthony Carboni got kicked out for laughing too much within the first 30 minutes of the movie. He got kicked out of the movie. They threw him out of the movie. <laughs> so I've already read what the post credit scenes are, and Me they too. don't make any goddamn sense. Right. So I have to see this. I have to see this movie just to see what the hell is going on. Because I'll be honest, the trailers didn't look bad. The first trailer even looked pretty good. But, man, all this this is not good news for... For the good doctor. I have less than zero interest. I will actively avoid being around this movie. <laughs> I'll say this. It can't be any worse than the first Venom movie. And I will die on that hill. That movie is bad. I suspect it is. From what I've been hearing, it sounds like it would probably be worse. Yeah. This weekend, the new Sonic movie comes out. I wish I could see that. I don't think I'm going to be yes. able to see that. Yeah, me neither. Uh I have to wait for that to come to Paramount Plus. That'll renew my subscription then. Anyway, let's talk to chat real quick. Yes. Starting with select comments from last week's Wolf Den oh, Podcast yeah. left on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. We got to talk to them first. Okay. We yes. have Johnny Ru 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 Ruiz. How did you manage to get Will? I hear his schedule is packed. He lured me in with drugs. I don't get that. I don't get what's the joke? Is there a in joke? In the beginning of the podcast you said we we got Will. Oh. On the show. <laughs> that's my that's one of my go tos. Yeah. Um also Joshua, as someone who is literally driving a semi truck, I can say without a doubt there are more wheels in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot we did that last week. Yeah. 
Robert Frost says, I like the try before you buy option on premium. I've been buying physical copies of games again lately just in case I don't gel with them after a few hours or days so I can trade them in at a lesser loss. Elden Ring is my first from soft game and I had to wait until the evening on launch day for my physical copy from Amazon. Not the worst thing in the world. And luckily, I love the game, but I was leer leery and didn't want to shoot myself in the foot like my buddy did when I recommended it. He spent a few weeks and decided it's trash, but he can't refund his digital copy. Whew. Yeah, uh, that's a good point. The whole, you know, if you pay a higher tier, you get access to all these games that you can try before you actually, you know, go in and, you know, make the commitment to play a 40 hour game or whatever for the long haul. I completely uh, missed. Oh, by the way, mom said Penn Station was okay. She survived. Mom was very worried about being in Penn Station. Every time I come home at night, yeah. she is afraid that I have to deal with Penn Station at eight o'clock at night. Like it's the <laughs> freaking seventies, like freaking like the warriors out there. I mean, from what I understand, it is pretty bad, but go there. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't, I look, I, what I was going to say was, I don't think Penn Station specifically is the bad part of Manhattan. There are, there are some, it's, there are some bad parts of Penn Station. I will say. Yeah. The newly built Moynihan Station, fantastic, great, great place. Yeah. Still a lot of weirdos in there, though. Yeah. Um. Anyway, uh, I completely glossed over the fact that uh, the new PlayStation uh, uh, subscription service allows you to try games before you uh, give yeah. your full purchase or whatever. I that's a great option. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah. Uh, Camaro 6460 says, even if I knew nothing about you guys, I'd still be able to tell that Will is the bigger brother. He's relatively calmer, able to cognitively pro process more information, excuse me, and values sticking to the facts as much as possible. Bob, on the other hand, is trying his best. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? I, it would have been only been better if you added bless his heart at the end. <laughs> What the hell? <laughs> anyway, it's, look, look, it's an older sibling thing. You wouldn't understand. It's just, you just that that zen that comes over you and your your desire to know facts rather after, than just after your twenties. After your twenties, your cognitive ability goes downhill. I don't know what this guy's oh. talking about. Oh yeah, no, I I basically <laughs> crashed into a wall with my cognitive abilities, but um um. Emiliano Zamaripa. It's interesting how Bob's bladder dictates when the podcast is over. I listen. I had to pee mid podcast this time, but I'm not. Yeah, I'm not fucking around today. Yeah, I've been drinking. I had. You know what it was? It's all this liquid IV I've been drinking. <laughs> That'll it's, do it. It's cold season, Will. That'll do I'm it. Trying to combat it with some liquid yeah. IV, guys. If you type in exclamation point sponsors. I now have compiled a list of sponsors. If you want, like, uh, if you ever like, oh, didn't Bob do a trade ad? I want some trade. You can now do that, and you'll be able to click on one. Um, I don't know if it's sponsor or sponsors. There it is with an S. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, uh, let me thank some supporters here real quick. Um, oh God, we're we're behind by a lot. Uh, <laughs> circa one X one says, uh, or I X eleven. Circa, no, 19? No. 19. No. 11. No. Circa IXI. What is that? Is that even a Roman numeral? No, I think it's just X with two pillars you know, on each side. I interviewed some of the developers of Jedi Outcast last week. Oh, my God, that's awesome. If you guys are interested, it's two hours long. Oh, my God, that's not. I'm, <laughs> I'm not interested anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's like listening to a podcast, but it's super interesting. If you're, I am a fan of those games. Send it to Will on Twitter. All right, I might. You did. Check that out. I'm sorry. I meant. I meant to get back to you on that. I, I, I do. That is something I am interested in. I just need to find two hours to sit down and listen to it. I am interested in Jedi Outcast. I'll. I'll, I'll yes. give it. When that. yard work season comes, I. I promise I will listen to this while I mow the lawn. I will put it in my watch later. Yeah. Ugh. 
Uh, the Dark Knight with 20 months. Loving the conversation you guys bring back Wolfden Live again one day. What is, what's the difference? This, this, this is the, Wolfden Live. The chair. The chair is the difference. Yeah. Um, the Konami Man with three months. Thanks for the pod each week. Thank you for being here. You are welcome. Suka- no, I'm thanking him. <laughs> Sukasa, thank you for the seven months. All these dongles are BS. I do have a lot of dongles. Yeah. I don't need any more dongles. Uh, and Screamy Yelly Gamer with the 23 months. One month away from two years of the Wolf Boys. If I hit 24 months, do I become a vegan automatically? <laughs> no, but you do start craving oat milk. Uh, I feel like that might be worse. Um, anyway, now we're in the chat real quick because I got yes. things to do. Uh... Metacension, I'm doing my first big esports event this month. LCS finals in Houston? What? How do I avoid catching the plague? Oh, you're just go. Oh, you're going to it. I thought you were like doing it, like competing. Um, how do I avoid catching the plague amongst salty, unwashed League of Legends fans? Okay. I don't know how to advise you in the COVID times. But in in the in the normal times. Pre-COVID, the move was uh, purelling often, drinking a lot of water, and eating regularly. I would say it's the same, just you might want to also consider wearing a mask and yes. washing your hands more often. I mean, hand sanitizer will help, mm-hmm. but in, in cases where you don't have hand sanitizer, definitely wash your hands or use hand sanitizer if you can't wash your hands. Also, Bring, uh, like, uh, what the fuck's it called? Clorox wipes to, like, wipe down your chair and stuff if you're really concerned. Um, Tech Matter says, and get sleep. Uh, That's one that I forgot. Uh, a lot of people like getting to conventions super early and, like, waiting online to outside and whatever. Don't fucking do that. (laughs) Yeah. Just roll in when you wake up. It's the line doesn't matter. You have a ticket. You're gonna get in. It's yeah. it, you don't have to wait online to get in. You will get in. You know, just just roll up when you roll up. Um. So yeah, don't 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 tire yourself out the whole day. Like 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 yeah. go get there when you feel like getting there. Leave when you feel like leaving. Don't try to make the most out of your day or whatever. Yeah. Um. Spread everything out across multiple days. Try to leave. Uh, I mean, you're not going to a convention. You're going to like a like a like an esports event. At a mm-hmm. convention, I would say, uh, try to leave a lot of time in your schedule to like uh, for just downtime. You know, because there's going to be things that you're going to see that you won't have known to put in your schedule. Anyway, uh, Otaku Sam says McDonald's is bringing the snack rack snack wrap back next month. Yes, those are great. They should have never gotten rid of those. That is exciting. Hopefully, they will not be expensive like everything else in fast food these days. Snack wrap is just a chicken strip with lettuce and cheese, right? In, in a in a wrap, yeah. yeah. But it's small, and it's it's literally it's a snack, so it's a good like on the go snack to get. So that's nice. You know, I I got my wife and I Wendy's the other day, just the two of us. And it was twenty dollars <laughs> for fucking Wendy's. Listen, man, it's a lot of money for two people to eat fast food. When I order stuff on Uber Eats, it's kind of insane. It like r- well, racks up real quick. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean Uber Eats, you got to pay for all that s- mm-hmm. the stupid fees and stuff and delivery. But like, I went to Wendy's to get. I'm, it. I'm fr- fr- I don't like Taco Bell, but every once in a while, mm-hmm. sometimes you gotta. And mm-hmm. I am frequently surprised by how expensive it is because like you could spend like four dollars and have a whole ass meal for like four people yeah but how come when i go there it's like ten dollars for me now it's it's fast food man it's they're pricing themselves out of existence it's it's sucks uh lifted lightning says bob get rid of thursday gaming streams and just teach us about coffee please i would like to do more just chatting streams to be honest Mm -hmm. um you're not going to get a Thursday stream at all this week. I'm busy. Sorry, everybody. Uh, that's 
That's like when I order six dollar pizza special from Domino's and it shows up f- for like thirty dollars. Like man, uh, one time at the studio here, me and E got McDonald's and we got those fancy new things, uh, the the like fancy meals. Okay, the hacked menu it's called. Oh, okay. Uh, and there was like a glitch or something, and it was like th- if it said it was like. 15 bucks or something for just for the mm. sandwich and then it like checked out for like three bucks it was like insanely cheap yeah yeah uh bob, bob girlfriend's first attempt at cold brew didn't go well any tips uh try again <laughs> yeah i mean it depends uh you have to make sure the grind is very coarse so not fine like coarser than you would for regular coffee and whatever um and you need to do it from you need to leave it in there from 9 to 12 hours. And if it's too yeah. bitter, you got to you got to either grind it more If it's too bitter, you got to do it for less time. Or change the grind in a way, but you should yeah. really just just you probably should just uh, uh if it's too bitter, lower the amount of time it's brewing for. Mhm. Uh what have you bros been watching lately? I haven't watched anything. So oh, I should have mentioned this earlier. I did. I tried to watch Halo. Oh, okay. I got to like the title sequence. And I, I want to finish the first episode just for completionist sake, but it's definitely not a show I'm going to watch week to week. It's, it's very weird in the beginning. Uh, and then Master Chief shows up and it's basically like, you know, five minutes of Master Chief being super cool. And doing all the cool Master Chief things, and I'm like, yeah, this is this is like all I want out of a Halo show, just Master Chief doing cool stuff. And then it goes back to like being the lore heavy side of Halo, which I think people think is why they like Halo, but it's not <laughs> why you like Halo. No, it's you not. like Halo because it's a fun game to play. So, I will say, like this, the Master Chief suit looks very good. The action was pretty cool. It it cut to first person view a couple of times. Oh but, no, that's a, that's well, a that's a gaming movie like like curse. So I agree, but I think it makes more sense here than it does in something like Doom, because here, like you see through Master Chief's visor right. and like Master Chief's visor provides information to master chief like how his shield is and what ammo he has in his gun so from us from an in-universe perspective that at least makes sense and it's it's not like they did a whole scene in first person so it's like the opposite it's just like, of iron man camera yeah it's basically the iron man camera but instead of looking at tony stark it's looking outward did he take his helmet off in the first episode uh i did not get to that part yet oh, okay I saw a tweet that said that, but I wasn't. I don't think it was serious. I think it was a joke. Yeah, I mean, they said he's gonna take his helmet off. I think that's dumb, but mm. that's just me and everyone else who agrees with me. Uh, Sir Smithers says coarse grind brewed directly in milk. Six hour brew time. Delicious cold brew, bro. You are just drinking milk. <laughs> that no, like that sounds awful. Are you putting water in there at all? I don't think the milk is seeping up the cold, the the, yeah. the coffee. I don't buy that at all. I mean, I don't have the science to back this up, but that doesn't sound right. Circa says uh, the second episode, his helmet is off for the whole episode. Are you fucking kidding me? Uh, That's gross. so annoying. Gross, gross. Try gross. it. I mean, I'll try it. I, I. Yeah. Six hours is so little, especially for milk. You're putting it in it's milk. It's gonna go I feel bad. Like, I feel you're gonna leave no, milk no, no, out. No, no. For... no, you don't leave it out, you idiot. You do it in the fridge. It's cold brew. It's cold brew. Do you brew your cold brew in room temperature? Yeah. Every every place I look up tells you. Are you fucking you stupid? <laughs> It's cold brew. You, you brew, brew it, it cold. You you brew it at room temperature. No, you, you put don't. It in the crap. And every instruction I look wait, wait, up wait, on wait, how wait, to make on. cold brew 
Hold on, back it up, back it up. When you brew cold brew, or when you yes. brew hot brew, whatever the fuck you're doing, <laughs> when you brew it, you let it sit out for a certain amount of hours. Do you I let it put? Do you, oh, explain, explain. I I put the grinds in the little mm. in the little container thing. Right. I pour the water on on the grinds. So right. I, then let it soak up. I let it soak up the water on the countertop for up to twenty four hours, and then what? I, <laughs> I hit the thing and it pours into the carafe and then I put the carafe in the fridge. That's so you let it sit on the counter for for that long? Yes, because that is what every fucking no! YouTube instructional video says is how you make cold brew. I've I, never seen one person stick their fucking wet grind in the fridge. <laughs> yes, it's cold Not brew. Rhyme. It's brewing yeah. cold. As opposed to brewing hot, which is what o you do in the- Otaku Sam says brew it at room temp. I don't buy that at all. He put that shit in the fridge. It's cold brew! And no, we're not putting milk out on the counter for six hours. That shit's- yeah, no. yeah, Sir Smithers is definitely putting that shit in the fridge. Yeah. So people are- Listen, people are agreeing with you. I think you're fucking crazy. I think that's well, room temperature brew. That's not cold guys. at all. Please remember to use the hashtag Will was right whenever I talk about coffee because clearly I know more about coffee than uh, to, to be <laughs> fair, only Otaku Sam is agreeing with you. <laughs> That's all it takes. Um anyway. Uh now I gotta try your hot also twenty four hours is an insanely long amount of time to brew to brew room temperature brew. Maybe that's why it tastes good, because you do it at room temperature for a thousand years. I got. I'll. I'll look it up. I swear to. I swear to Christ. That's what every every recipe I find for cold brew. That's what they say. You leave it out on the counter for up to twenty four hours. Then you put it in the fridge once you pour it from the grinds into the carafe. CJ uh, Gabriel in the chat says, "Brew it in the air fryer." <laughs> Circa says, "Is the room cold?" <laughs> Uh, we do have the air conditioning going. <laughs> Cronkersaurus says, I ran a coffee shop and it's not in the fridge. The professional. The professional agrees with me. But boy in the chat, who I will listen to because of his name. Fancy coffee makers do cold brew and you don't put your entire coffee maker in the fridge. Imagine that. <laughs> That's not the same. Also, you're not brewing it for any time at all when you do it in a coffee maker. The True. the the freaking uh, uh, AeroPress claims to do cold brew, and it's ten minutes, and you have to do it uh, you know with ice or whatever yeah. or, or or cold cold water. It's correct by Starbucks standards. I'm gonna time you out for even just <laughs> saying Starbucks standards. <laughs> Anyway, All listen, right. I this, put it in I, the fridge. I, I don't right. know what you people are I, on. I have I have here the instruction, the instruction manual for the OXO cold brew maker that I use. Okay. And it says, add coarsely ground coffee to, a, to the container. Pour 24 ounces of water around the rainmaker. That's the little thing that like filters the water into the grounds. Do not stir the coffee grounds. Brew on the counter or in the fridge. Place the lid on the brewing container and brew on the counter for up to 24 hours or in the fridge for up to 24 hours. After brewing, place the container on top of the glass carafe and the coffee will flow into the carafe. And then use the carafe to store, uh, to, st to serve and store coffee. I don't like how the resolution is that we're both right. I'd rather you be wrong. <laughs> so, I, I, so I looked up the Hario cold brew maker, which is my cold brew maker. Right. Cover brewer and place in a dark spot or in the fridge. Placing in a cool area like a refrigerator should result in a little crisper brew, it says. Turns out you can make your cold brew however you want. However, yes. Do with the just, will method. Just not in milk, because that's what a fucking yeah. psychopath would do. <laughs> <Yeah>. Sir Smithers. <laughs> like, like, go to jail. 
<laughs> for that. <laughs> All right. We got to the bottom of something. Go, thanks for hanging out, everybody. Yeah. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. So go check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you could do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den Podcast or your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get the show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Forms. Ray Zufflin says Bob is going to go piss again. I mean, eventually. <laughs> Give me a minute and probably. Yeah. All right, I'm seeing who I want to raid here. Uh, so far, no one. Um. Hmm. All right, we're going to raid AJ. Everybody right. say hello. He's playing hello. Smash. Hey. Uh, I'll see you guys probably not till Sunday. Sorry about it. I got things to do this week. Hmm. And a video on Thursday, actually. So I'll have a video out. There you go. Uh, everybody go say hi to AJ. We will see you later. And also goodbye. Bye.